good afternoon, folks. If this is your second stream of the day for me, welcome back. If not, welcome. We are going to be continuing some Shadows Over Loathing today. It's a fun, goofy game based in like the 1920s with like Prohibition, uh, Cthulhu stuff, mobsters. It's kind of it's kind of goofy, and it's also just based off of the Kingdom of Loathing uh, universe, which is also just goofy by default. It's kind of the uh, it's this this is the sequel to West of Loathing, which is also a game I could highly recommend because it's also a very well written and very funny game that y'all should experience if you like uh, RPGs or just fun. If you like fun, you should do that too. <laughs> but before we begin, I am still fundraising for the LGBTQ Freedom Fund, which helps pay bail to secure the safety and liberty of individuals in jail and immigration detention. They also help to address the disproportionately high rate and harm of dealing on LGBTQ folks, which are um, targeted by society for reasons I probably don't need to um, elaborate on. But anyway, that's what that's what the LGBTQ Freedom Fund is for. So if you're able to donate to that, I have a donation button below my stream. I have a donate command, exclamation point donate. I get you the link. And every 30 minutes or so, I have that link shared in the chat with the chatbot. I also have my Discord link shared by that same chatbot if that's something you're interested in as well. Any support to the LGBTQ Freedom Fund is greatly appreciated. Alright. And we're back. Yeah, I, I would have started sooner, but like after my last stream, I was like, hmm, I don't know when or if I'm doing holiday shit today with anyone and Turns out right now, no. So I'll be doing that stuff tomorrow, but not today. So streaming will continue as normal. All right, where are you? Shadows over loathing. Fun game. <clears throat> Last time we uh, saved this, the village of Sandwich. Not there aren't there weren't actually witches there. It was all just hearsay. Just a bunch of hearsay, no actual witches there. Well, maybe some, but overall no witches that were uh, able to do anything harmful. And then we accidentally enrolled in college. <laughs> we crab walk. <laughs> I forgot about that. All right, so. Pause for Chrome. Should you be, should you, should be you to making over an, over an equipment there to think on how to doing it. All oh, right, thanks. Oh yeah, this is Professor Adams. We, he was, he was trapped in bronze. So we um, brought him back to life. Ah, it's nice to be back in a lab laboratory again. Smelling that good old chemical smell. Oh, well, to be smelling anything other than bronzed, point of fact. Wait, were you actually conscious while you were bronzed? I would rather not speak of it. So, what was your favorite thing about teaching here? Well, access to materials and funding is the practical answer, but even more important than, than that to me was having a community where everyone was always excited to talk about their latest projects and delighted to hear about your own projects, progress. The atmosphere of innovation and discovery made coming to work here every day a joy. Wow, nice. Also, having plenty of students around to do this to do the scut work was very handy. I observed that the institute is admitting women to students now. Yes, yeah, it's nearly 50 years ago, I think. That isn't a problem for you, is it? Oh no, not at all. I've always considered myself an egalitarian in that regard. The sciences are for everyone, you know. Well, that's good. I must say, however, that the amount of unclothed ankle in the display is scandalous. Young man must be in constant danger of their brains overheating. <laughs> Remind me to get you some heart pills before we go anywhere with dancing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Let's check our to-do list. See, Rufus wants us to get a pearl from the fish mother. 
The thing right now, we have, yeah, we have minus one to all of our stats because of uh, Rufus's fish queue, so let's go do the fish mother first. Oh, we found miscellaneous chemicals. Matches, matches. Hmm, hold these for a minute, would you? What are they? Oh, a little of this, a little of that. May go on holding them if you're sh if you have a use for them. I've got plenty. Pockets Adams, they used to call me in graduate school, you know? Except for a brief period in which they called me arson. That little mishap was Kukul cleared up and forgotten about. Alright, cool. Let's forget about arson. Bahuga. It's a nasty mud hole. Is a cloaca covered in mud worse than a regular cloaca? Well, there's one way to find out. Oh god, that sound. <laughs> you emerge from that disgusting hole into a slightly less disgusting cave. Although let's not let's not be unclear there here. The cave is very disgusting. What piles of eggs littered the uneven ground, and you hear a quiet gurgling breathing sound from the other end of the cavern. Let's get Rufus's stupid pearl. <laughs> Slimy eggs. That's probably the fish mother. Uh, what's this about? Shadowy Rift, alright. Oh, oh no. No! I guess I don't need to breathe in here. <laughs> just fake out, just... <clears throat> We're a fish person, kind of. What is this? A throbbing ring of negative energy around a chalice-shaped object. It might be a chalice. You should ask Jessica about this next time you see her. I'm guessing this is, like, later game stuff that we just keep stumbling upon. And stumbling we are. Oh god, it's dripping. The cloaca is dripping. Oh no. <laughs> oh, I guess let's approach the fish mother. Hear a smooth, melodious voice speaking directly into your mind. You are a cunning and wily human to have bypassed the defenses of this place. Uh, thanks. Don't ask how I did it. Alright, no, fear not. The eggs I give my children to take care of are largely non viable. And it helps keep them out of trouble if they think they have responsibilities. <laughs> Why have you sought up this audience with me, human? Well. Ask politely for the pearl. Well, it's about the pearls. Us, you are a treasure hunter, are you? You, who have killed 13 of my children. Yes, I counted. I have the further temerity to trick your way into my lair and pursue of material wealth. It's not like that. Your words are the ashes of one whose pants are aflame, human. I will grant you no such boon. Nuts. Well, we can fight the fish mother, I guess. <clears throat> uh. Okay, well, first things first. Head chomper. <laughs> Leave Martini alone. <clears throat> uh, let's see, what do we have? A rusty cola can that can do 15 damage to one critter. Super aloe. <laughs> A nuclear bomb does 10 damage to all enemies. Okay. <clears throat> that could be useful. Let's uh, use a nuclear bomb. Oh, Fish Mother's got a lot of HP, I just noticed. Oh, two of the fish dudes are just dead. That works. Well, that nuclear bomb made things a lot easier. Alright, fish mother. Enjoy getting shot in the face. Plonk. What does he have? We'll poison the fish mother for six. And that can heal. Oh, poison it is. Ew.
Jazz hands! <laughs> Another six poison be 15, so we will not be killing the fish mother, regardless. <clears throat> well, D Dr. Adams is probably gonna, pe gonna die, so might as well do something with him. Blurp. She is a she, she is a powerful foe. But not powerful enough. <laughs> Plunk. You won. Hopefully this this won't set off an un uh, off a protracted human slash fishman war or anything. <clears throat> Professor Adams tells you some boring facts about the foes you just defeated. Well, we got we got the fish mother's uh, pearl. Just a bunch of rambunctious fishmen. A teaming mass of fishmen. This is apparently where the fish mother keeps most of her young. No fishing. Fighting, actually. Oh. This might be a little tough. Shadow Bomb, ooh. Hmm. Let's see, I could use that, but I only have one of those, and I kinda wanna save that for maybe something else. We could use a Rusty Cola Can on a fish person, especially if there's one I can kill. There is. Oh, Geronimo! All right. Sacks of violence. Everyone takes three. Okay. Excuse me. I can one shot you. Should probably, should probably soften you up. <clears throat> to get one shot next turn. Let's orchestra strike you. Poison will kill you. 
and then we'll shoot this one with our derringer. Perfect. The fish mother's young number slightly. The fish, the fish mother's young number slightly fewer thanks to your efforts. That was a bit to read. Tells you some boring facts about the fuzz you just defeated. Turret grows stronger. Fewer is better. There's still a lot of them. Hmm. I made a bunch of things inadvertently. <laughs> Roll of a duct tape is, is. Oh, it's something you add to a hat. Okay. Sound is great for consuming your identity, so nobody can make fun of you for how badly you ski. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's boost, let's buff up this uh, baseball cap because it gets more range weapon attacks, more damage, which is what we have. We have range weapons that we use. So, tape that bad boy up. It gets sturdier but less stylish. Taped up chocolate hat. Is there anything else we can add to it? I could probably add that, but I don't use spells, so it's a little less useful. <clears throat> well, the fish mother has been uh, dealt with, and we got her pearl, so we can go back to Rufus. Free meat. We take meat. Mmm. Oh, hello again. I got the pearl. Don't ask me for details. That, that gross, huh? No questions. Wow, oh, that pearl really is a beaut. I'm gonna have to go into hardcore analysis mode for a while. I'll give you a call when I figure out the next step of my plan. Alright. What should I do with these extra fishman eggs? Well, I could cook them for you. A pinch of lions and muriatic acid are totally edible. I don't want to know how you do, you know that. He whips the glistening fish eggs together with some chemicals and fries them over a Bunsen burner for you. Ever been to the ocean at low tide? Imagine frying that smell. <laughs> God. Pretty good food, actually. You can't really scramble this kind of egg, but Rufus did his best. Thanks. Fancy potions, what we got? Nothing I want. To, nothing I care about. Let's see. <laughs> so he lets you take your own. See, I think that's a map of, yeah, that's a map of the, the west place that you explored in the last game. <clears throat> Carefully wipe Rufus' nasty fish goo off of all your clothes and skin. Much better. Let's see what we effects we got. Food, we got sleazed armor. Like the opposite of a beautiful pearl, you've got an oyster inside of you and you aren't particularly beautiful. God. Uh, oh, our potion effect right now is um, hot armor, which perhaps we should get a different uh, potion and food effect. That's tempting, but I won't, I won't want to save that for another uh, another time. 
Two more AP would be busted, but I think cosmetic wine might be within the, in the cards. Your mouth is burning so intensely and you wouldn't ever notice that the rest of you is burning. Okay. Now we got nine moxie, we can dig in here. We find a pretty cool helmet. <clears throat> this head is shockingly modern. The extra AP per round would actually be pretty sweet, but our current hat gives us a lot of power. Alright, let's see. <clears throat> Geology course. Jump the manhole. <laughs> Theoretical topology lab four. Missions, library. Hello, Separat, huh? Are you talking about like Final Fantasy or is this another Separat or Separoth or something? Yeah, there's like 10 different places where this fucker probably is. Of your time, old man. The elevator rumbles and shudders as you take it down. Really far down. It feels like maybe it's just a really slow elevator. <laughs> Eventually it stops. The door slides open with a ding. You step out into an underground quarry filled with hex hexagonal rock formations. Big work lights have been positioned here and there. And they illuminate three large hexagonal doors in the facing wall. Nifty. Alright, there's some rocks. There's some, some mice. Goodbye, mice. It's an emergency eye wash station in case you have any unexpected dirty eye problems. A gray haired lady is sitting here looking grumpy. Hello there, are you okay? In a word, no. Who are you? You aren't one of my students. I'm new, I just picked up geology as a minor today. I'm Martini. Ah, in that case, I guess you are one of my students after all. I'm Dr. Josie Morton. In relation to the Morton engine that runs the elevator? Well now, you've been paying attention. Yep, I invented that. Wow, keen. It is pretty keen, if I say my so. It may say so myself. Do you need help? Miss Dr. Morton, you seem hurt. I could, in fact, be, use a bit of assistance. Yep, at my age, I'm not really supposed to be messing around down here in the mine anymore. But I got bored. One twist of my full ankle. Pretty bad, if I'm any, if it, any judge. Oh geez, I can never remember if it's cold or heat for a twisted ankle. It's both. Cold first and heat after the swelling's done. We don't need to worry about that though. There's a bunch of med med medical supply crates scattered around down here. At least one of them should have an ankle restoring potion in it. That's a pretty specific potion. A lot of loose pebbles and gravel down here, so it's a situation that crops up on the regular. A bunch of hex rocks have somehow assembled themselves into an anger looking goal, and maybe they don't like being quarried. If rocks can have opinions, this has some troublesome implications. <laughs> Make some gravel. Alright, let's see what's going on. What are these all doing? Crackling hex rock. Going to shoot Professor Adams for 12 damage and increase his own moxie by 3. And heal all your allies? Fuck that, you're not doing that. Uh, sacks of violence, go! Orchestra strike. Orchestra strike. No, 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 no. I can't fucking talk. 48 damage. Holy. How am I doing that much? 
damage to these poor rocks. Is it because I'm a psychogeologist and I can get in their head? What the fuck? Alright, well, whatever. This thing's gonna be annoying, so let's uh, just not let it do that. Oh, there it goes! <laughs> the slowest damn thing in the history of ever. Okay, that thing only heals its enemies, so we can save it for last. Ash and ashes and rocks to smaller rocks. Potion, even when it's ground to powder, this stuff is still floating around all spooky like. Hex rock helmet. Calling this a helmet really downplays the fact that it's a complete coincidence that it even fits in your on your head. Rocks destroyed. It's one of those 40 rock switch things you read back in geology class. Oh, here's a thing. There's nothing left in here but a bunch of Jindy Band-Aid boxes. This so regards you with an eerie intelligence and even an even eerier lack of fear. Oh, oh, that's unfortunate. So cool. Some upset looking rocks are here, thrumming with malice. Thrum back. I think I have a battery somewhere. Let's use one. They're fairly cheap and useful because they give you an extra. You lick the battery and get another action point. <laughs> and now I can use or Orchestra Strike to kill off both of these two. Not gonna work, but here, have some poison. Clunk. <laughs> Clunk. Jagged Hex Rock Shard. It's a combat item. Three, five damage and causes bleeding. Ooh. Hex Rock Badge. Generate three HP per round. Ooh. That's pretty sweet. A bunch of mods have discovered this light and are doing what comes naturally. Judging by the footprints inside, the contents of this kit appear to have been eaten by a rat. Oh, little fuckers, come back! I need that ankle restoring potion! Oh. Alright. That's unsettling. We have over here. So let's team with those weird rock monsters. Access the Hexar Quarry is prohibited except from within red permission of the jail department on a very good reason. Oh hey! It's that shortcut. Contain, this kit contains four big bottles of iodine, which you're not in the market for right now. The golem rise with furious ecstasy. Knock its rocks off!
Let's see, do I have any miscellaneous items that do enough damage? I need one to do at least six damage. I need to go just buy a bunch of batteries. I'm gonna fight stuff like this. Actually, I'm a fool. My orchestra strike one shots them anyway. What am I doing with my life? Wasting perfectly good batteries. Cause this little shimmering rock doesn't even fight. <laughs> Another rock busted. You'll be great in a prison chain gang. Uh, whatever locked me up, I don't care. Oh. Did it look? I'm ready to check this one, okay. Hey, a whole bunch of hex rocky stuff is hidden in here. Wad. Enjoy your sleaze wad. Oh, I didn't even see this little guy back here. Polished by a weird dad in the basement. This stone has been polished by aeons of arcane micro erosion. You fought the hex rocks because they gave you no choice, but you're not going to say no to the treats spilling from their corpses. Mmm, treats! Yeah, we got the ankle restoring potion. Sweet. Oh. It's just literally right there. Whatever. Hey there, find that ankle potion? Got it right here. Thank goodness, sitting on the ground down here almost as dull as sitting at my desk upstairs. Thanks for that. Did you learn anything down here? I learned there's a lot of weird rocks and they do a lot of weird things. That's good enough for a miner. Meet me up in the classroom and I'll sign your paperwork. <laughs> Alright, well, geology complete, I guess.
Hi, Dr. Morton. Go ahead and call me Josie. You did me a solid favor down there. Might have literally saved my life, considering we're on break. Could have been days before anyone else showed up. Let's see that course turn skip yours. Thanks. You know, no problem, kiddo. You know, you remind me of someone else I met once. Got that same adventure gleam in your eye. Gosh, shoot. Oh, never mind. You wouldn't have heard of him anyway. Oh, I have a feeling I might have. Alright. Chemicals, I guess. As you're walking near the banks of the Pork Kim River, a medium sized chunk of sulfur laps up on the bank. It smells pretty bad. Distill it. Oh, yeah, we are a psychogeologist. So we can, like, understand the, the thoughts and feelings of rocks. Take a chemical, leave a chemical. Something about lithium. I think there might be another, uh... Place I go to. Free XP, we take it. The sculpture is called Zero Man. That's also what what you rated on a scale of one to ten, man. <laughs> How is your holiday day going, Hug Dispenser? If you are in fact still there, I can never tell it's people lurking. I appreciate it, but I just don't know if people are actually there. Otherwise, it's, oh man, I don't have a problem talking with myself. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. That's tech. About it. Eating dinner, huh? What's for dinner? This is what your all true warriors strive for. What in the fuck is this? Dutch Chinese food, Indonesian, none of the above. <laughs> as long as it's good, right? Like, well, I had some friends come out of, I had a mutual friend of, uh, of Joy and ours. Well, two of them actually that were visiting out of state. And we went to, um, they took me to a hibachi place and, mmm, that was quite good. And I'm kind of sad that I don't have any of the leftovers left over, because I had I had them last night. It's rare for me to like hanker after leftovers, but those are some pretty goddamn good leftovers. I hope he's retired. It's like 200 years after that or so. I think they, I think they said they could, if I could find lithium somewhere in Ocean City. Like maybe the fridge factory. No, the soda factory. There we go. Operator, get my worthless son on the line! <laughs> Mister, I'm not a payphone. 
That's what the last payphone said, and I'm not buying it. Thanks for the meat, loser. <laughs> What we got? There's nothing over here but lemon scented industrial waste. Oh, I, to every place over here is a Dutch place, if you think it through. This place is pretty abandoned, alright. All that's left is a metal storage cabinet and a few crates of empty soda bottles. Not even any bottle cups left. Fooey. Alright, let's see what we got. This open crate is full of empty soda bottles, or rather half full. It has two cases of bottles left in it. This metal cabinet seems like the only thing of substance left, probably because it's bolted to the floor and locked with a combination lock. Looks like a pretty standard four digit combination. Crack it open. It has a pretty cheap lock, so you solve it through the simple process of pulling on it real hard while you spin the dials, so you can feel when the mechanism inside releases on each digit. Easy peasy. We got a bag of loose lithium. This is enough lithium to pacify 10,000 maniacs, or to pacify a single maniac in 10,000 separate occasions. <laughs> this crate is nailed shut, but it feels full. Well, I have a crowbar, but I probably that's probably if I didn't have the means to get in here. All right, so we got the lithium we need. Let's go back to the, to SIT. And then back to chemicals, and we get to try to figure this shit out. One moment, if you please. As we are near the administration's building, I'm a, I'm, it might behoove me to look and check my mail. Oh, sure, don't. I'll wait here. Dragging a massive canvas sack. Wow, how much did this is junk mail? Fortuitously, the mailroom clerks are kind enough to discard the junk mail on my behalf. The sack is all from the Poisons of the Month Club. Oh, neat. Now, a nasty flask now pies. Three additional poison. Mmm. Delicious and na deliciously nasty. That's me. I am deliciously nasty. Okay, so now we have lithium in the fourth uh, place. I don't know what combination I need, but. but so we're just gonna guess. Chrome, oh, perfect. I just got, I just luckily found it. Chrome polishing juice, just what you needed. Score. I finished. Oh, Professor Gilbert will be a, a judge of that. They, Gilbert the Goblin. They take a rag and a sample of chrome metal out of a desk drawer and test out your polish. Yes, yes, this is very good of a polish. Well to doing, thanks. You have to passing this class with colorful flight. <laughs> Professor Gilbert will wilt to signing a transcript of yours in gladness. They sign your transcript with a flourish. Then leave the room chattering excitedly about how great their motorcycle fenders are gonna look. <laughs> Little bastard. You have now graduated. Yay! Sweet. It means now we should be able to go back to the main lobby. And... You seem to have taken a wrong turn somewhere, unless you were trying to go to a subterranean maintenance corridor filled with steam pipes. Maybe you were, considering it's SIT and all. You turn around and start to head back, but a homemade well, classroom made probably, maintenance robot turns into view and turns a valve wheel. Hot steam shoots out of the nearby pipe, blocking your exit. Hey, hey robot, turn that steam off. Boop boop. Well, fine, I'll do it. Beep beep. Let's fight some fucking robots. Oh yeah, these robots just take less damage from physical stuff. Because they have armor. Let's see. Got any fun tricks you can do? I can throw a baseball. Let's see, you're gonna... This one's probably more annoying, so yeah, we'll throw a baseball at this one. Then orcas to strike it, to kill it. And how much can damage can do? We can still do 21 damage. All right, get 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 deleted.
perish. <laughs> Anarchist hardware. Robot fuel. I already act pretty fast in combat anyway, so I'm not super worried. You shut off the valve wheel and escape the maintenance tunnel in harm. Somewhere on the other side of the campus, the toilet explodes. <laughs> Sometimes that's just what happens. Alright, how much XP? We have a lot of XP, holy shit. Well... I don't know if we do any- if we have any other use for XP now. I mean, there's some use. I think we have some, like, books or whatever we can, like, use to, uh, learn things. Blood lore. A, a, a historical reference text on blood, described in the introduction as that new fascination sweeping our veins. You learned that blood, sorry, blue day, was the ones considered one of the four humors, along with dad, shock, and reference. <laughs> God, that's so bad. Three maximum HP, let's read some more. You learned that letting the blood out is considered best medical practice because blood needs 30 to 60 minutes of exercise after exercise a day. Um. Not until the 13th century did physicians discover that blood was circulatory. I.e. it traveled around the human body. Some still believe that blood could travel even faster if it had wheels. The book ends, ends with the suggestion that leeches could be used for bloodletting, and if leech labor laws were relaxed, they wouldn't even need to be compensated. <laughs> Gee, this book is a lot of uh, learning. You, you've learned a lot from this book, though maybe learning isn't the right word. Well, let's see what that leaves us with, in that case. Oh, that just gives- you've learned a lot about what people used to believe about blood. <laughs> so that gives us just 11 max HP for free. That Well, not free, I used a lot of XP, but... Back in March. Hi there, Ted. I passed my classes, see? After a moment he nods, hands you back the transcript and gestures the door to thumb. Hello, Kanuda. How are you today? How is your good orkly self doing? We are playing Shadows Over Loathing. Let me make sure my mic's on. I was a goober earlier. Bean is doing alright. Playing some of this fun game. Enter the stacks. Let's see what we got back here. Oh, that's not ominous. <laughs> this old man is chanting something in an language you can't understand, apparently conducting some kind of dark ritual with a rather important looking book, which you'll have already noticed is generating some sort of ominous dark portal. Oh boy. Oh well, let's interrupt him. Uh, excuse me, what? What do you want? Can't you see I'm busy? Well, it's just that I'm looking for a certain book, and I'd be frankly amazed if it isn't the one you've got on that pedestal there. And you think I'm just gonna give it to you? Get out of here! Who are you? You don't recognize me? Should I? I I've only been enrolled here for an afternoon. <laughs> I'm Dean Mormwood. If you don't leave immediately, I'll expel you. Uh, I already graduated. I mean, out of this dimension! What are you actually doing? Didn't I just tell you not to interrupt me? <laughs> Oh well, yeah, but you're, already, but you're already interrupting us, so you might as well tell me, right? Oh yeah, certainly. I'll just review my entire plan to some random grad student, or whoever you are. That would certainly be to my advantage. Would it? Oh, you're being sarcastic. <laughs> A stellar observation. Full marks. Now get out of here before I put you on double secret probation. Criticizes candles. <laughs> I gotta say, though, I don't think you're gonna get very far with those candles. Excuse me? You need some pro proper occult candles for a job like this, not store-bought. Listen, I know a guy. I'll have you know I made these candles myself. They're pure beeswax and virgin's blood. Virgin's blood on a college campus? Think again, buddy. It's a nerd college, you fool. Virgins are plentiful. <laughs> sure, but as plentiful as beehives, right? What? Are you applying my beeswax? No, don't touch that. The dean rushes forward as you, as you reach to pick up one of the candles and accidentally brushes against the portal. 
He screeches in pain and terror as he's sucked into it with a whoosh, like a mouse caught in a shop back, and then the portal vanishes with a quiet pop. Whoopsie! <laughs> well, that was a more interesting way of dealing with it than um, just fighting everything. It's a lot of books. There's a stinky book. Let's see what that is. I need to see what this stinky book is. Ah, here it is. This is unmistakably the book you're looking for. Check, check it out. And as an examiner, or as in borrowed from the library, uh, both. You got an item, Librum Umbra Malum Ovilia. This book radiates menace. The spine is as dry and cracked as the spine of a spooky skeleton. The binding reminds you of a skeleton bound to a dungeon wall with rusty manacles. The picture of a skeleton on the cover is already evocative of something scary, but you can't place what it is. It's spooky! Ooh, there's some hobo code there on the back wall. I kind of barely glimpsed through the... Some hobo code is scratching the wall between two shelves. It's Hobo Relevant Literature Library. You scour the nearby shelves until you find the book in question. The, psych the Psychography of Panhandling. Ooh, okay. Handling them pans like a fucking boss. Let's see what. Let's see. We are Martini, <laughs> the jazz agent. Uh, let's see. Even though its subject matter is complex, this, this book is written in such a simple language that even a child hobo can understand it. I'm handling them pans. Oh yeah. <laughs> Still, it's gonna take an adult level of willpower to actually finish the thing. You study the book until you've memorized a bunch of techniques for getting people to relinquish additional meat. You drop the book in one of SIT's pneumatic book return shoots so it can be of some use to the next prospective hobo. A rising balance lifts a rising balance lifts all ledgers. Hell yeah. Probably shouldn't read this. You open the book, the symbols in the first base right. The symbols on the first page writhe and change. This book is dangerous and you shouldn't read it. Put it away. Well, what's this book then? A different? Oh wait, this is just a copy of the student handbook. There's nothing unusual about it. Well, shoot. That cursed book has got to be around here somewhere. Okay, so. The, the, the Dean person was just doing spooky otherworld ri rituals to a student guidebook. And his candles look fine. We're just, we're just bullying him. Alright, well, we have the next uh, item that we need to uncurse. Let's go back to Ocean City. Go to Murray's Antiques. Actually, before that, let's look at our buffs. Our perks, certain effects, and all that. Let's see. Food, we could probably get a better food uh, buff, so let's see what foods we have on our, on our person. Scrambled fish man eggs, mmm, Mobius cookie, bucket of chum. The devil's chicken, <laughs> vegetable sausage, coffee cake. Ooh, that's tempting, honestly. More, more AP is good for fighting. Baklava, fancy exotic dessert made from phyllo dough, honey and nuts. To this day, nobody knows what phyllo dough is. Shadow salad, mushroom steak, mmm. Shadow hot dog, block and brought fairy cake. To a fairy, this is a huge birthday cake. To you, it's a grisly reminder that you killed a fairy on its birthday. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, we're, we're gonna probably eat the coffee cake, because two more AP is hard to beat, honestly. You've had your coffee. It was in cake form, but still counts. <laughs> Alright, cool. So let's see. We have a message. Call Dante. Call the mob. Oh yeah, we're, we're working with the mob. Upon auditorily processing the alert bell from this telephonic device, I have answered it. Come on, Don. Dial it back a notch. As it is you who have dialed my number, I do not entirely understand this request, Martini. Ugh. Alright, well, anyway, what do you need? Our observationalists have reported that you have or will soon become operational within Porkham, in a locus of education known as the Seaside Institute of Technology. Is this another shakedown? I'm not going to put the screws on the entire ver university for you. That will not be necess necessary. We are not in a competitive relationship with this academical institution. No kidding. The specific task I require of you is too sensitive to communicate with you in a telephonular manner. <laughs> These words are fucking me up. <laughs> Proceed to the luncheon fish and chip fish and chips. 
whereupon you will meet with one of our operatives, who is known by the sub -requit. Greasy Steve, you organize him by. No, that's fine. I'm pretty sure I know him when I see him. Then for two and his chance on your objective. Alright, we'll do that after we un try to uncurse this uh, book. Oh, wait, we have a cursed fishing rod we can do too. A cursed fishing rod. The machine whirs up, winds up, whirring and humming at odd intervals, casting, ab casting about for some elusive frequency. This continues for some time, and you begin to having difficulty breathing. Just as you fear you might pass out of incessant cycling, the incessant cycling suddenly stops with a pop. The curse has been removed, and you can breathe once again. The fishing rod's curse now swims in the very depths of the machine, daring any astral fisherman about to come down and get it. Go fishing! Oh, are we a fish person? What? Is this the night he chooses me to live a new life above the sea? Uh me, me, choose me! Oh, we're a hook! Why are we a hook? <laughs> no, is there a certain fish I should be choosing? And this one with the Viking helmet's kind of funny. Is there another secret fish back here? No? No secret fish. Hello, Marvelius. Thank you for the lurk Marvelius and the follow. Marvelius has joined the Bean Army. Will you, will you choose this one tonight? Hear his song. I make mischief. I'm a wretched soul. Chaos is fish, Fisher Stick's only goal. Well, almost only. See, I am very lonely. And to you, I won't lie. Tonight, I'd like to die by your hook and then be cooked. Oh, well, that's a little grim. What about you? Nobody knows a trout as sweet as a saucy Mr. Calvin meat. <laughs> I like to kiss the other trout on the tail or where thereabouts, but I'll tell you my most base desire to be fished and thrown into the fryer. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with these fish people? Nobody sees and nobody woos. Portal invisible, glub glub a furloo, but you could make this loser a winner if you rebirth me upstairs as somebody's dinner. <laughs> I gotta figure out which one I think's funniest. I don't know if like it matters. I like this one, Mr. Calvin Meat. I don't know what I don't know what <laughs> that means. Your mind tingles. The fishing rod's crest has caught another fish today, and you get the feeling the more fish you help him catch, the happier he'll, he'll happier he'll be. Wait, who's he? You know, you just know deep in your gut that this curse is, is a man. Not in the way that sailors talk about their ships using female pronouns. This isn't a male curse. This this curse is a man. Weird. <laughs> huh. You sit in the chair, which is surprisingly comfortable, and put, and put the weird metal dome thing over your head. There's three buttons on the machine. Uncurse, project, and neither. Wait, am I meant to catch more fish now? I mean, I guess we'll catch the other ones, too. Huh. Your mind tingles. The fishing rod's curse has caught another fish today, and you get the feeling the more fish you help him catch, the happier he'll be. Alright, well, let's catch the other one, I guess. We're doing weird fish shit. Wait, I don't understand. I, did I caught that one already? Let's catch... Oh, wait, you're back. Well I, well, I caught you and nothing happened. I tried catching that one, nothing happened. Maybe I have to catch this one. Fisher sticks. Let's go. Um. A very boring fishing rod. Um. Uh, let's let's uncurse the book instead and see what that's about. Ita Vero, you offered the grim Latin comb to the machine. Your head tingles as the machine thrums and vibrates. Inhuman vowels ululate in your ear. Dark words form at the tip of your tongue. A cacophony of language reverberates and resounds and pow suddenly dis dissipates. The curse is severed from the book. All that nasty Latin has been wiped away, revealing the uncorrupted beauty beneath. 
101 delicious mutton recipes. The book's curse now lives in the machine. I don't think you can project your, your... I don't think you can project your consciousness into it. Thank you again, pal. Uh-oh. Ha, hello, small bird. There is still wasn't left an old Friday knot for those who asked the right questions. A Aggie has lost much of much of the Still, he hunts. Hmm. All right. Henricus has much confidence to come here alone. Got a nasty shadow book, so that might be why. Hyla Grimhild. Hails! Not often is Latin spoken on our soil without bloodshed. It agores well to our future. Hendricus offers us much power. Yeah, the tribes who ally with Empire are greatly rewarded, but I can name no tribe who would be as powerful as you, Grimhild, if you are good to that man. Frighten not. Don't speak of marriage at this time. Ah, why scold me? Would it not go well for our future and yours? A secure peace for all with much power to you and benefits. Would you not like to have fine silks, Grimhild? Spice and spices and fine creams. Farewell. Hail, Zagi. Spit on, spit on the son of Rome, Grimhild. Frathia. Henrik is offers power on top of peace. Power in return for suckling the, the sucklings of a she wolf. That is no power. Agi drinks the milk of bears and he spits on the sons and daughters of Rome. Agi speaks too much of suckling. Talk plainly. No truce with empire. Frathia. Yeah. So this guy's like, yeah, marry him. This guy's like, that guy's a fucking bastard. Ave, barbarian. Hails. I stand before you in the name of Emperor Hector Gaius Julius Caesar Divus, dom Dominus of these lands. The Emperor's birthday is next Mercury's day. It is a big birthday. He will be 40. Sign his birthday card, barbarian, and the Emperor shall look upon with favor in your tribe. When we are in public, you call me barbarian. Ah, uh, so you seek in private to ply me with sweet words, but now you call me barbarian. I am on official business, Grimhild, and my words are chosen accordingly. If you do not perceive my pa if you do not perceive my passions, it is only because I have dominion over them. Speak not of passions to me in this place. Sickest threaten him. <laughs> Step aside, or I'll go right through you. Look at me. What would happen to the man who stands in my way? I will respond to rhetorical questions. Rhetorical, do you know how many men I've men have killed? I don't I respond to rhetorical questions. And I don't ask questions. Vex me further and I'll kill your entire family. I don't respond to threats. Happy Christmas. Merry Crimbo, Twitchy. Merry Crimbo. We're playing Shadows Over Loathing, and I'm apparently in, like, this Latin book, dealing with, like, this fucking Latin dude. Okay, so he's, he's not gonna respond to threats. He doesn't respond to rhetorical questions. He doesn't respond to open questions. Do you remember when you first annoyed me? I don't respond to recall and process questions. Are you attached to your eyes? Do you think you still will be by sunset? Fair, fair Grimhild, it is fairly one. You are right. I will not wish to lose my eyes and be deprived in turn of your fine beauty. It's not personal, Henricus. It's just a birthday card. Are you touching your eyes? The shim sharp wood is yours indeed, Grimhild. But oh, if you had only lashed me with a Latin tongue, your barbs would ring like great poetry. You bore with your Latin. Yeah, Grimhild. This is a foolish man. He is no danger to you. Birthday card to, to Emperor Imperator Gaius Julius Caesar Divus is a powerful document. There is no greater opportunity for the tribes of the north to gain Caesar's notice and favor. 
puts the card puts the card into the sky. <laughs> It's now a constellation. <laughs> oh, alright. Oh. Consummatum est. <laughs> the curse is once lodged within that forbidden nest and has been unwritten and undone. You find it in the fascinating final chapter you did not notice before. 111 delicious mutton recipes. <laughs> 10 new ways to prepare mutton? What a bounty. Happy birthday, Caesar, wherever you are. Thanks, Mar, but it's Jessica, not Caesar, and it's not my birthday. My mistake. <laughs> That's the uncursed machine. Well, let's see if we can figure out what to do with this, because one of these fish wants to, like, get murdered or something. I don't understand what I'm doing. Is this the fish? <laughs> well, you choose this one tonight. Could this be the one? Nobody knows a trout as sweet as saucy Mr. Calvin meat. I like to kiss the other trout on the tail or thereabouts, but I'll tell you my most base desire, to be fished and thrown into the fryer. Sure. I don't understand what I'm doing here. <laughs> Your mind tingles. The, fi the, fisher the fishing rod's curse has caught another fish today, and you get the feeling the more fish you help him catch, the happier he'll be. Think on this. Hmm. I got that book, and possibly also a bachelor's degree in chemicals. I'm not exactly sure. Wow, sounds like a busy day. Yes, that's a fair assessment. I'm going to bed now. Okay, sleep tight. We'll have some, we're having some trouble pinpointing the next artifact, but we should have sorted that sorted in the morning. Stench armor. Cold armor. Oh, we need sp spooky armor. And sleaze armor. And hot armor. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just clicking buttons. Oh, I lose. <laughs> it's Charles does. There, there, there isn't currently a Charles at it, though. Hey, where's Charles? He went to deal with some interference we're getting in the... the Tectotron. I'd have thought he'd be back by now, actually. Well, don't worry. Get some sleep. Hey, no worries. Welcome back. We're playing... We're playing Shadows Overloading. Oh, this is a pretty new... This game actually came out in November. So I'm not surprised. It's uh, the sequel to West of Loathing. And I walk like a crab. <laughs> yeah, West of Loathing's real good. I don't know if what. Ah, okay. No, this is this is a uh, Shadows of Loathing. This is based more on like 1920s, like prohibition and that kind of stuff. To do get some sleep oh I almost forgot before we left on his errand Charles asked me to have you pick a third store of course the first applicant is advanced pants it doesn't say what this they're planning on selling but I have to assume it's pants the second is truncheons and bludgeons this fella is really excited about weaponry and the last applicant is ye old chemiker so SIT science lady wants to sell potions potions sounds useful Alright, thanks. Now I can look at all the stupid bullshit I have in my room. Well punt. <laughs> we've got a little student thing. A nightstand. We've got a, a tentacle buddy. Our destroyed luggage. We've got Rufus's hot plate that we can use to cook stuff. If we had some mana flour. There's a cow skull. Let's see. Shelf of knickknacks. We've got a crystal that we can rub, but we think we already rubbed earlier. The Crescent Throne, your birthright. This recounter is terrible, but the price was right. Hello, you awful little creature. <laughs> it's a little worm wiggling around. Uh, TV's no sh got no shows, and we got this thing, with this effigy we can pretend to fight, but it's time to sleep. And have another weird-ass dream. Yet another fitful dream. How can you sleep when your bed is floating? You always look fun back fondly on your afternoon at, after at your afternoon at college. <laughs> the one singular afternoon we spend at college. Okay, what's this about? Three statues of you, each whispering. The whispering drifts in and out and mixes together, making it hard to understand. All I got, all I ever, all I'm doing. Bronze study. 
bluffing three statues of you. Let's see, bronze, steady, or blood. I'm guessing this is like some sort of like thing that we can do. Let's give this one to a... Uh, the one with the hip shades. Oh no! I didn't want muscle mysticality. Yeah, whatever. It's probably not the worst. The stream has a horrible hole in it. Alright, hole time! Oh. Jesus Christ. Alright, um. What did you do, you idiot? My research wasn't thorough enough. Will the barrier hold without me? One can hope. <laughs> What's this guy got? See, he's kind of a bad guy. Someone, someone, something prevented prevented me from what is it? From entering the campus. Oh uh, well, our dream had a freaking nightmare hole in it. Uh, all right. Fun. Time to wake up. <laughs> Sometimes you just have a nightmare hole, and then you wake up, and then it's all good. Let's get our buffs again, because I think from waking up, we got a... Uh, wrong thing. I think a lot of our effects are gone, because when you go to sleep and wake up... So we can interact with a lot of the stuff in our room again to get some buffs. Like, you get twinkling fingers, or magic weapon attacks, okay, whatever. This one's... Range weapon attacks is what we use. Sit in the chair for what? Inherent stink. Hello, you awful little creature. Let's shadow box the freaking effigy. More melee weapon attacks in case we need that. And all right, cool. Well, let's see. Po let's start with food. Let's find one to eat. Uh, for now, we can eat some a bucket of chum to get some moxie. Uh, potion. Eh, yeah, we can do that. That one's pretty good. <laughs> Nailed it! Maximum AP is really nice to have. And... Okay, cool. Mar, thank god you're finally awake. Am I? If you say so. What's eating you? I'm at what's in. Charles Wallace has gone missing. Really? Where did he go? He wouldn't be missing if I knew that. She closes her eyes and takes a deep breath. Okay, okay. I'm panicking. Come on, Jessica. Don't panic. I do know where he went before he went missing. What happened? We were having trouble de getting the de Detectotron to focus on the next artifact. All we could get was the Big Moist. The Big Moist? It's a swamp, north of Porkham. I'm pretty sure that the entire swamp is not the cursed artifact in question. Charles went out there yesterday afternoon to see if a downed power line or something had caused interference. Huh. And he hasn't come back yet? No. No, he hasn't. Maybe I should go looking for him. Are you trying to drive me crazy? Come on, get a wiggle on, for crying out loud. Charles could have been eaten by gator men by now. Gator men? <laughs> okay, what? Excuse me, eaten by what now? Is this map a slice of Swiss cheese? <laughs> it's a sponge. Which deli have you been going to? A sponge is definitely not a map. <laughs> You're going to a swamp. It's soft, damp, and has holes in it. What do you want from me? <laughs> Alright, okay. Did you say something about gator men? Gatorman, you know. I don't, which seems like a good thing. The Big Moist is home to a tribe of nasty and belligerent half-people, half-gators. They don't take kindly to intruders, such as, for example, Charles Wallace. Or me, presumably. Are you chickening out on me now, when a friend's life is possibly at stake? Ever heard of sunk cost fallacy? Uh, from the look on <laughs> Jessica's face, this does not seem like the best time for this quip. If you want to continue having a face to make quips out of. I'm going, I'm going. More... Oh, Rufus has got a message for us. You dial number. Uh, the number you dial is not for us. Please hang up at Rufus. Rufus? Oh, it's you, Mar. Sorry about the subterfuge. I had to tap into the university line to get a phone down here, and that isn't, strictly speaking, legal. Anyway, I think I forgot the next step in building my quantum tele telecommunications device. Can you come into my lab as soon as possible? Sure, we'll go there and, um. We'll go to the fission chips and also see Rufus, I guess. And, uh, pork him. 
fish and chips. Human intercepted. Human Kovo in it. We require information. Uh, what do you want to know? Why do we exist? Oh, good one. The easy one. Sarcasm detected. Like, why are you asking me? I didn't build you. Why not ask the students who built you? Reply. When we approach, they. Ah, oh, well, I guess if the baking set of volcano I made in eighth grade start asking me ex existential questions, I'd be a little nerve too. Who cares about purpose? Heck, buddy, there's no such thing. Nihilis nihilism detected. I want a sense, I guess. But look, meaning life is whatever you want it to be. You gotta find your own purpose. You get me? Helpfulness, slow. <laughs> All right, have it your way. Your purpose is to give me some meat. A little slot opens in the robot's chest and some meat falls out. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, hey, it's Greasy Steve. This has got to be Greasy Steve. Hi, you're Greasy Steve. I like how you didn't phrase that as a question. You're a cool customer, kid. I get what Donnie Thursara sees in ya. Put him there. He whips his hand on his label and offers you a handshake. You take it with a grimace, and your hand immediately slides out of his grip. Oh, God. <laughs> now, here's the deal. We got some, what you call it, dirty meat, you see. And we, get, and we're, we gotta get it laundered. Meat laundering? I don't know much about that. Ah, it's easy. The only tricky part is you gotta find a way in SIT's laundry room to do it. SIT's laundry room? Like an actual laundry? Yeah. I don't get how it's a steam laundry, and only a steam laundry is gonna be powerful enough to clean this particularly dirty meat. He passes you a sack under a table and you look inside. Ugh! Yeah, I can see what you. I, I can see that you see what I mean. Anyway, get that cleaned up and bring up. You know, get your payment. Gross. Ugh. God. Dirty meat. Gotta keep your meat clean, kids. An SAT student wearing a bulky overcoat flags you down as you're crossing the street. Honig! Uh, hello? Do you find yourself in need of a fuse this day? No, thank you. Until next semester, then. <laughs> Alright, whatever. <laughs> Alright, Rufus, what's up? So, what's the next step? I don't have to go back into the sewers, do I? Oh, no, this is much more straightforward. Well, you're part of it will be. I need some way to broadcast the quantum signal from this fishman pearl. And I figured the most robust communication transmission network, Fable, is the commercial radio band. The nearest broadcast tower is the radio shack <laughs> in the big moist. Okay, what do I do there? I just take this transmitter I built and plug it into their console. That will transmit a special frequency out over the radio. Now I just need a bunch of different test readings so I can access the signal for Light, C, data loss, and so forth. Uh, all we have to do is find as many radiant, random radios as you can. Tune into W and WGCR. And use this receiver to test the transmissions. At least ten different radios should be enough. Let's go to eleven, just in case. All right, cool. So we gotta find a way to the, the laundry room. We don't have, we don't have any, any more cheese for this little mouse right now. There we go. Steam power. This will dry your clothes way faster than boiling them. Launder the mob's meat. You don't want to look that. You don't want to look at that gross, gross, filthy meat again. So you just throw the whole thing in the machine to start the wash cycle. You wait. The machine continues to launder the meat. Keep waiting. Continue waiting. It's like watching paint dry, but less interesting. Skip to the end of the waiting. It's like watching grass grow, but there's no breeze. Skip to the end of the waiting. You take advantage of the fact that time could pass at an arbitrary rate during one of these dialogues, and skip to the end of the whole laundry process. This bag is as clean as a bag as a this bag is as clean as the bag a whistle came in. As far as you know, the meat inside is equally clean. Finally. Alright, back to the fission chips. Ooh. A discarded gym bag a, a discarded gym bag on the sidewalk. Check it out. The bag is full of rocks. Someone must have been using it for strength training. What is this? Fucking Kenshi? <laughs> An even closer examination confirms this, as the rocks are themselves covered with residual strength. You scrape it off. Fantastic.
friend Mar, it occurs to me that my old office here at the institute may yet be accessible. And if so, then my binder of research notes would be of some value to us. Oh, really? Where's your office? At the far the end of the infinite corridor. How is that possible? Mine was one of the first offices in that wing, you see, and they began the corridor from that end. Huh. Okay, I'll wait here. You pause to mop your brow with your pocket handkerchief. Dare say the infinite corridor has gotten longer since they since la since last you were here, but at length you have returned to your old office and discovered in your delight that it's just as you left it. A bit dustier, perhaps. Ah, your old lab assistant's desk. What was his name again? Smith? Smith? Schmidt? You do recall that he he used to give you merry hell for mispronouncing it all the time. I wonder if you ever made tenure. Ah, this takes, you takes me back. To the old days you were obliged to use coffee cups for your experiments. As test tubes have not been yet invented. <laughs> the Dean eventually made a very strict rule against japery and practical jokes. Uh, all your books are still here. Even your autographed copy of Newton's De Motu Corporum in Gyrum. Fascinating stuff, that. Though a bit outside of your wheelhouse. Ah, uh, your first periodic table. Earth, fire, air, water, phlogiston. Things were so much simpler back then. You locate the spine the spine of your notes binder, the detritus, and make it out of a quick jerk, such that the remainder of the pile settles itself without collapsing. Merlin to do skill, boring lecture. Alright, well that's probably the last. You have recovered the notes for each. Proceed back to Mar. Well met, Mar. I have returned. Hi, Professor. Did you find what you're looking for? Indeed I have, and I just say make them in handy in times ahead. Sweet. How are you holding up, Professor? All's well, my fine young trout. Have you any questions for me? Nah. Alright, Greasy Steve. You glance around to make sure nobody is watching. You slide the sack of freshly laundered meat across the table. Greasy Steve opens the sack and glances. Nice job, kiddo. Here's your payment. He picks up his briefcase, empties the sack into it, and slides the briefcase back to you. Seriously? <laughs> he shrugs and goes back to something space. John, I'm going to name again. Yeah. Yep, cool. Alright, neat. Sad looking hobo selling pencils. Oh, you wouldn't want any hobo code I could give you. It'd be probably just dumb and wrong. Probably mix up the word one that means free pie here with the one that means bottomless pit or something. I'm not I'm not so keen that there is a quest item for a pencil. That makes me nervous, because West of Loathing, you had to go at the, to this town, this ghost town, and like get a haunt, like a ghost pencil. You had to like sharpen it, and just it was it was awful. <laughs> All right, let's see what the big moist is like. Chapter four, swamped. It's a bus stop. You want to trust this rickety old shelter to protect you from a single raindrop. It's a notice board. See what there is to notice. There's a there's a notice in the Federal Bureau of Prohib Prohibition. Wanted. Oh, banjos! Yeehaw! Information pertaining to the whereabouts of Jarvis and Clem Schlitz. They were the crime of moonshinery. Last seen in the vicinity of a rickety old cabin. Another poster grabs your attention. Missing. Tom Chapman. Inquire at Largemouth Bass and Sons. The face of a teenage boy is, is circled in an attached photograph. A portrait of the boy and his elderly male relatives, each holding a largemouth bass proportionate to his own height. Hmm. There's a similar poster right beneath it. Missing. Kathy Tracy. Inquire at Largemouth Bass and Sons. What is going on at Largemouth Bass and Sons? Make a missing missing poster for Charles. Well, you don't have paper which to make a poster. You could write Charles's name on the two that are already there. Great, perfect. We're better hoofing over to Large About Thoughts and Sons. I'm hoofing. I'm hoofing. <laughs> We're supposed to go to Radio Shack for Rufus, so let's start heading there. He 
You slept through the swamp and is interrupted by an unfortunately familiar face. Halt, interloper. Your pernicious interference ends here. Ah, jeez, not you again. Indeed, it is I, and I will give you even more cause to regret this encounter. You may have thought yourself clever, hiding in the institute where the Dean's words would protect you from our attentions. But now you've left that protection behind, and furthermore encroached on the source of our power. You have made yourself extremely vulnerable. I'm just looking for my uncle. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know anything about the Dean or your plans or these weird dreams or any of it. Regardless of these claims, you will not leave this place unscathed. Quite the opposite. So, like, scathed? Indeed. Well, fine. I'm not scared of an accountant. What are you going to do? Embezzle me to death? He pulls a gun out of his jacket. I've decided to balance these books in a more direct fashion. Swell. Well, let's see what we can do. Let's see if we got any fun items I can just blast his ass out of this fucking universe. We've got a little shadow homunculus. A lot, of, a lot of nice, unfun things. Shadow hexagon. It's gonna boost all shadow creature stats, but yeah, we don't want that. Uh, let's throw, let's sleaze it up a little bit. Here, have a have a handful of dirty water. Dexter. I probably need to try killing these ads first. Leave the child alone. Oh, Jesus. Reduce all foes moxie by three. Well, that's fun. Uh, what's... Let's keep Martini alive because that's kind of what matters. Is that yeah, bleeding damage is kind of gross. Okay, I'm probably gonna have to uh, heal. Something that gets rid of bleed. Uh, should have one. Yeah, here's a gauze pad. <laughs> it's just on his. It's just on their fucking head. Who are you gonna attack? You're gonna attack Turt? Nah, well, can't be helped. That one's gonna bleed to death. It's, I think on its next turn. So we're gonna just have to, uh. Deal with this. This fight's pretty difficult, I gotta say. this thing and have him survive it be a potential yeah we're gonna probably do that instead actually it's not me mean to poison so we can give it poison and they'll just die yeah My 
my thing is I don't know how much damage I can do. 23 and like 14, so I got a feeling this guy is going to move before he is. I need to probably do a I need to do a lot more damage than what I'm already gonna probably be doing. Let's see what I can do. Well, that'll definitely help. Oh, here, take 15 damage. Okay, we're gonna just win now, actually. That was very, uh, very scary. It's definitely the closest I've been in a while. This would be sufficient data. Oh, fuck off. Whew! You won. Terrence scuttles away with that. You haven't seen the last of me or some cliche. <laughs> Press around and tell you some boring facts. Turret becomes stronger. Nice. Well, that was fun. That was just a random encounter. Ugh. Property of WGCR. Keep out. Someone's old campsite and it looks trashed. I miss all the garbage to throw out. You find a shiny 7 8 combination wrench with CW painted on the side. It's Charles's wrench. That's strange. Obviously, this brings to Charles, but he doesn't seem like the guy, guy, kind of guy who would lose one of his tools carelessly. Not, nor the kind of guy who would leave trash behind his campsite. You look around more carefully and discover weird tracks in the mud. Big, clawed bipedal tracks. Maybe Gatorman tracks. There's a spot where some kind of scuffle cleared up, and ah, geez, well, that tears it. Charles Wall is supposed to have gotten kidnapped by Gator Men. Maybe he dropped the wrench in purpose to attract your attention. Hope we can find him soon. Shadow Grease, mmm. Red Fern, something really depressing must have happened here. These bricks have been inexpertly mortared together, pry them apart. Oh. What's up, dude? I must say, I didn't expect the future of quite so much fighting in it. Yeah, sorry, you arrived at a kind of a weird time. Or at least you're following someone, someone's who's in a weird situation. Oh, well, think nothing of it. I was never one to shy away from a scrap in my youth, and although those days are far behind me, the exercise will do me a world of good. There's some guys hanging out in here looking stoic and cool, and also a gator man with more than the usual allotment of teeth. Can we sneak in here? Yeah. Interesting. The bandages are nice. There are a couple of bricks of tape stuck to one of the bricks here. The tools you open the walls are letting swamp water and also out again. You might expect them to cancel it out, but I guess not. Fluid dynamics are a mystery to me. Hi, who are you? VR radio technicians. Why are you standing here in the dark? Why not? It is radio. There is nothing to see. <laughs> oh, you got me there. Hey, about this water. What about it? I just wanted to point out that it isn't stagnant. It's flowing from one side of the room to the other. Ah, wondering water. One of us several very common weaknesses. Water burning? Irony terrible. The vampires make for the door, but getting each other's way and dissolving to ashes quickly washed away. They were vampires? <laughs> oh! Apparently this machine is powered by evil, or at least, or at least weird. What are those guys sharing on bed weight? Why isn't it a coffin? Wow, this thing is pretty cool. It also looks very lightweight. A glowy lightning ball thing. Can you believe this is this is a thing that was invented in the past, not approximately 60 years from now? We're in a restroom. It isn't important to look to look good if you're on the radio, so this sink has a first aid kit instead of a mirror. Burt Worth's finest tooth wax. Oh, that sounds awful. Little gauze pad, that's nice. 
Got some more. Got some. Got some more XP from flushing the, the turret. You don't know about this console does, but if it's any consolation, no one really expects you to. You plug in Rufus's gadget, and the console starts emitting a different series of beams than it was emitting before. Nice. Speaking of which, let's go to this, uh, one of our, uh, books, and there's, um, his, his, Majesty's well, least favorite poems. <laughs> You're learning a lot from this book, but maybe learning isn't the right word. We got two more HP. That's nice. I guess let's go to Largemouth Bass and Sons. <laughs> my goodness. Look there. In the distance. Is my perception of death playing tricks me or have the birds of this era grown to simply enormous size? Huh? Oh no, that's a plane. I don't know of that word in the context of geometry or, ge or geography. And in either case, the assertion is non- sense. Look, it is diving to catch prey. Oh, geez. Okay, see? Birds don't see it send big columns of smoke in the air when they catch prey. Perhaps it is the mythical the phoenix. Sure. Let's, someone crashed a plane in the swamp. This is the most di diagonal plane you've ever encountered. Just a bunch of miscellaneous plane stuff. A grumpy looking pilot. Seems like you're kind of a problem here. Ha, huh, you think? Yeah, three kinds of problems I got. If you don't count the headache. The plane being stuck ass words downward and ass downward in the swamp is the most obvious one. Anything I can help with? My name's Mar, by the way. Rhonda Rasmussen. Hi. And yeah, if you got some time on your hands, you can bet your buns I can use it. What happened? I'm looking to be the first to fly a plane all around the swamp in one go, see? I nearly made it too, but first to fly nearly all the way around the swamp. We'll be making any newspaper headlines. And look what I got. A plane half buried in the muck, tainted fuel, and even if I get those sorted out, there ain't enough runway here to, for me to get flying again. Hmm. Your plane seems real stuck. Oh, you noticed, huh? Yeah, it's sticking up out of the ground there. Mm-hmm, right, yep, yep, sure it is. Let's talk about something else. What's wrong with your fuel? When I landed, the fuel tank got full of swamp water, which I don't know by what by how well versed you are in chemistry of aircraft fuel, but not good for it. Not good for it. So I siphoned the tank dry. Figured it wouldn't be that big of a deal since I got a can of backup fuel. Oh, let me guess. That full of water, too? Ain't not so bad as it can't be a little bit worse. Can that be fixed somehow? Well, technically, yeah. It just needs to have the water distilled out of it. I don't have that kind of equipment, though. Hmm, maybe I can dig it, dig something up. That'd be great. Any basic distillation setup will should do the trick. It ain't rocket science, just airplane science. That's a much slower kind of science. Here's the can. What's involved in building a runway? With enough tar and macadam, I could slap down a quick and dirty runway. Dirtier than quick, for certain. It'd be good enough to get me out of here. And I've got plenty of tar, but... Where'd you get that bar of tar anyway? You know, that's a funny story. But anyway, I need a load of macadam to do it. What's macadam? It's like gravel for fuss budgets. For my purposes, I need a lot load of rocks exactly three centimeters across. That isn't very many rocks. Each image of a rock is three centimeters across, not the whole load together. Oh. I could look for rocks that size. Well, that'd be great. Come to think of it, I believe I passed an old quarry on my way down. I didn't get a close look because I was kind of distracted. But I can mark it on your map for you. Can't go myself. I need to stay here and guard the tar. Consider all the possible ways in which you could might extract this plane from its current state of diagonality. Leverage. Procrastination. Faith. Some kind of big magnet, I guess? Heavy industry. Four oxen, one wagon tongue. <laughs> what is this fucking Oregon Trail? You examine the crash site carefully, walking all around and tapping gently in this and that until you find the spot you're looking for. Perfect place to stand. Having found it, you wedge your shovel in inside the plane and definitely pry it out of the muck. Nicely done. Damn. Hi, I got your plane unstuck. I saw, that was a hell of a trick, I gotta say. I'm duly impressed. She's still kicked in mud and weeds and all, but I guess that comes with the territory. 
In a, little, a real literal sense. Nothing a little elbow grease can't correct, plus maybe a little regular aircraft grease. You don't have anything new to report to Rhonda, so you just both just stare at each other in silence for a moment. As you do. Alright, so Felton Quarry is where we can get, um... Looks like we can go there and get rocks. You notice a big brown rock, half submerged in the in the swamp. It's an ancient mammoth copper crop coprolith. That's poop. You can almost you can almost tell what that mammoth had for breakfast. Mmm. Delicious. <laughs> Another one of those Gatorman campsites. Maybe the, the ones who kidnapped Charles came this way. This campsite is similar to the previous one. A lot of Gatorman tracks and a lot of discarded trash. These gator men sure are slobs. You also find a 16, uh, 15 16th combination wrench labeled CW. Found Charles's other wrench. Ooh, excuse me. This rock has an X paint on it for some reason. It's by far the coolest rock you've ever met. <laughs> you, you hang out with the rock for a while, it is amazing. This is by far the coolest rock you've ever met. It's a weird shadow pocket or pouch or something. Shadow mead. Mmm. There's some hobo. Ooh, we have enough. Your new friend rocks. My my new friend does indeed rock. I mean, look at him. That's not. That's like the coolest damn rock I've ever seen. <laughs> this must be the vein of rock candy or the hobo message is about. We don't have a pickaxe, so. A dump truck sits beneath the chute, patiently waiting the day of its dump. I think it needs to be two centimeters. There's a big letter labeled. There's a big lever named labeled dump here. <laughs> the gravel in the machine isn't the right size for us. She needs three centimeter rocks. Okay. Oh, well, we didn't do the right combination of rocks. We gotta get them to be three centimeters exactly. It's too small. Perfect. Well, you don't even know who this truck belongs to. I don't care. You're just gonna steal it? You know that's a crime, right? I'll bring it back. Mm, well, you promise? Yes, I promise. Sheesh. I don't know. Then it's very sincere. Oh, come on. Look, I'm not just... I'm, I'm just not willing to be an accessory to dump truck theft. I said I'll bring it back. Alright, well, if you don't, it's on your head, not mine. Who are you, my mom? <laughs> Got your macadam. Say, those are some good looking rocks. Nice find. Okay, give me a hand spreading these out and tarring them up. Spend some time making a makeshift for anyway. It's hard, dirty work, but it beats dealing with fairies and fishermen and the rest of the bonkers nonsense you've been getting up to. Well, nice is maybe over complimenting, but it's good enough. Hey, we said we'd bring it back. <laughs> we, brought the, we brought the truck back. I dare say these blasted mosquitoes are draining the life out of me. Thanks for not saying to suck the life out of you. I'm sorry. Never life. 
He's, he's from the olden times. He, don't know, he doesn't know what idioms are. Or at least they are idioms. Ooh, I wonder if we can do the Moonshiner Shack stuff for the uh, tar. Or the fuel or whatever. An interesting rock. Half buried in the muck. Pull it out. He yanked the rock out of the swamp to reveal that it wasn't particularly interesting after all. Ooh, what do we have here? This rotten stuff is crawling with worms, and the worms are crawling within it. You identify several sets of tracks leading away from the cabin. You follow the cat tracks, but after a few minutes, they lead up to a tree you're not willing to climb. I guess I'm being honest, it's really a tree you're not capable of climbing. I was just trying to preserve your dignity. dignity. Badger tracks. You start following the badger tracks, but after a few minutes, you realize that this course of action might culminate in you encountering a natural badger, so you change your mind. Terrifying animals, just absolutely the worst. You follow the human footprints. They lead to, let's call it an improvised latrine, a few yards away from the cabin. You just decline to investigate it further. Duck tracks. Which you through a lengthy sequence of locations that are of zero interest to non-ducks. Horse tracks. You follow the horse tracks to some water, but you don't drink it. I mean, why would you? It's nasty swamp water. And cow tracks. You follow the cow prints to a big hole in the ground, next to which lie a pair of shoes with thick horse cow hooves next to them. Huh. Cow shoes? <laughs> Alright, found some new shoes. Oh, they have little hoof prints. Alright, fair enough. Let's see, we got gymnast shoes. <laughs> Less cartwheel everywhere. Already did that, so probably nothing else there. Well, let's, uh. It's a ram shack cabin, or maybe a, a ram cabin shack. This pot has been demoted from soup to chamber. Blech. Whoever was here must have left a hair hurry, and there's still a poker game in progress. You draw cards until you beat all the hands that were left on the table, and you collect your winnings. There's a spare car tire leaning against the wall here. The tread pattern on this tire identifies it as a Lincoln, which sounds like an impressive piece of deduction, but honestly, a top hat and beard were a dead giveaway. Well, fair enough. Psyche bed rolls. No one's been here in a while. Oh, hey. Rusty old fire powered stool. You're pretty sure they aren't meant to be operated indoors. Hey, maybe you can use this thing to fix the rest of Easton's fuel. You like the fuel, you like the fire, you, you like the fire and run the stove for long enough to fix the fuel, but not quite long enough to cause your, your own death from smoke inhalation. Alright, so now we can go back to Rasmussen and get our ass out of here. You step through a cusp of sw swamp cypress into the edge of a gloomy clearing. Quiet before the sound of dirt raining on an open grave. Two burly men work hurriedly with shovels to bury the corpse of a gator man, whose epaulets, hat, and mailbag mark you as some sort of mailman. As the gator is swallowed whole by the mud, his grave diggers straighten up and look at you in the eye, sweaty but defiant. You know, someone upon the darkest and most secret of the swamp, where, s where sins are buried, and gators. What? Wait, a gator man? What am I looking at here? Oh, have you not seen a gator man yet? Sorry, it's hard to keep track. These are the guys Jessica mentioned, and they're pretty much what you expect from the name Gator Man. They're intelligent, upright, walking gators. Alligators. They have tough, scaly skin, lots of teeth, and pissy attitudes about everything that they aren't already eating. They especially hate intruders, and are the second biz biggest reason that this swamp is a, particular, a popular tourist destination. First being, it's a swamp. In any case, what do you want to do? Step forward into the clearing? Sure! Okay, we'll come back here in a sec. Let's go back to the crash site. Hello, I got your fuel cleaned up. No Shinola? If there was any in there, I think I got it out. Let's have a look. Well, look at that. No legs at all. Oh, jeez, did I mess it up? No, no, that's a good thing. It means you got rid of all the water. Didn't see any dirt in there either. Nice work. Thanks. I guess you're all set then? Looks like it. 
Got my plane, fuel, and runway all sorted out. Thanks a ton. I couldn't have done it without you. You know, you could have a career in aviation if you ever decide to give up. What do you do? I'd rather not attempt to explain it. Gotcha. I've had jobs like that. Well, I haven't got any meat on, on hand to pay for your time, but here, let me give you the spare flight helmet as a souvenir. Ooh, that's not a bad hel helmet, actually. Oh, neat. Thanks. You're in the pal. Keep, keep her flying. Bye bye There's, there's... There she goes. Alright, cool. Well, that's solved. Let's go check this Leathers Brothers house out, I guess. Spot a shadowy orb hovering around and decide to fall deeper in the swamp. That might seem like a bad plan, considering old stories of falling will-o'-wisps and becoming lost in the swamp forever. But, a will-o'-wisp is a floating ball of light, and this is the opposite of that. So logically, this is actually a very good plan. Except for our least a group of into a group of technically shadow monsters. Oh! Well, that's uncomfortable. I love the fucking crow's music noises. The goodness of your plan has not been proven. QED. Don't know what that means, but alright. <laughs> so the man observed you with monk like serenity. Hi there, looks like you're quite. Like, like you've set up quite the trading post here in the swamp. The other man shakes his head. Paul can't speak. Can't or won't? Don't. <laughs> How'd you become mute, Paul? That's a very personal question, sorry. It ain't a problem, it's just a hobby of mine to make observations on the nature of questions. Basically, Paul lost his tongue in a poker game. That's awful. Back home we play our strip poker at high stakes, or not or not at all. <laughs> Can we trade? Oh. I think I already have a... Yeah, I already have that. Condensed Swamp Gas. Gator Punch. Gator Man Skin Pants. Impenetrable Tack. It's much harder, harder than normal tack. A pickaxe. Yes. Roll of duct tape. I already have that. We already have sharpening stones too. All right. Hunter's beans. A veritable hill of them. A sack of genuine leather. It's empty. It's only made of genuine leather. It does not contain genuine leather. The ambiguity is clear now, and the person responsible for the original description has been sacked. <laughs> Careful of him, or he might tan your hide. Nothing to see here. Just a dead gator man. The book is a lot of max HP. Holy hell. Wouldn't go in there for you. Why? Might not like what we see. Oh god, it's a cracked egg! That egg is busted. <laughs> Told you you weren't a pretty sight. I was looking forward to eating that egg all day. Came dinner time and only went and bloody dropped it. Sorry for your loss. I bet. Oh no, not the egg. 
something to say about the dead gator? I swear I don't know he was a mailman. Would never intentionally hunt a mailman. What's wrong with killing a mailman? Listen to yourself. Can, can't, can tell you ain't a hunter, alright? Most, most any species is fair game for hunting, but mailmen are protected by international treaty. Last hunter I know who hunted a mailman got pulled up by the International Criminal Court and mailed to Mars. Is he okay? Obviously he ain't okay. Don't joke with me. That's a nightmare scenario for a hunter. Getting mailed to Mars? Since you on my spine, it does. I never accuse you of killing a man, man. Ah, oh, hell, me and my big mouth. He was in my, he was in my way, you understand? He had, had no idea he was a mailman. I never would have touched a mailman if I had known. And my brother, he had nothing to do with it. Understand? I swear it. Who are you? Me? Ain't much of my story. I'm a hunter. Name of John Leathers. If you can't tell from the accent, I'm from Albion. As a toddler, I've hunted small game like mosquitoes and gnats, and then moved on to foxes and voles and such as I grew up. I like the game over the over here, but I got my eye on the greatest hunt of all. What's that? Big picture. I like to build a ladder to heaven so I can hunt the dinosaurs. <laughs> That's more of a five to ten year plan, though. Um, I don't think that's how ladders or heaven works, <laughs> but, but I guess it's good to have a dream. Wouldn't it be more practical to build a time machine? Now that sounds ridiculous. John wipes his brow with the blade. Four. Never been asked so many questions before. You can talk to talk, alright, but what, what about hunting the hunt? I got work that needs doing, but I ain't going out there while searching the swamp for the sod who killed their mailman. They find, they find me, I'm dead. You don't, you don't have to be a leather man to know which way the wind blows. What are you exactly asking me exactly? Working on something real important, a project. For that, I need five gator hides. Even though a place you might find them, scoop, scoop, scoped it out myself. Couldn't be easier unless it was a scope smaller number of gator hides. What's this project you're talking about? Not so fast. Need to know I can trust you first. Well, ain't you with those gator hides up being hiding from me? Haha. <laughs> A phlegmatic nod. Phlegmatic doesn't mean full phlegm, it means calm and controlled. So say that then. <laughs> Can we trade? Anything else? No. Alright, well. Let's see. Is that better than my little gun here? Oxy plus 3 damage plus 2 bleeding. Slapping trout. <laughs> the wood cutting axe. It definitely hasn't been left in a dank cave for decades. Let's see, we got anything that's got a. Uh, any buffs? Sharpening stone. Currently wielding a hex rock blaster. Sharpen it. You sharpen it. You sharpen the hex rock blaster to a razor's edge. Spider Fang, Poison, Disposable Razor Blade, add, add that to the Sharpen, yep, just add just more things, Moxie plus 4 cold damage, okay, gun parts, make any weapon into a gun which you use your Moxie to determine its damage, interesting, it's the damage of weapon by one, we can just pile all of this onto the freaking thing, we just, this thing here. Hefty disposable sharpened X rock blaster. Mox Moxie plus six physical damage and costs two bleeding. I think that's way better than my thing I have. Little little pew pew gun. I love the ridiculousness of just adding a billion things. Moxie plus three plus two bleeding. Yeah, that's strictly better. Alright, cool. Seems pretty good. Still, Hamethyst Choker.
That's more weapon damage. This is extra healing. Hmm. I give you some some passive sustain. That might be good. Because I use Orc Orcus to strike very often. Cloak for Clown Pants. Two physical armor, one hot armor, one cold armor. One maximum AP, yeah, these are pretty, pretty buffed ass pants. Alright, cool, and Turt's very powerful at this point. Mm. Slithery D the snake, Buzz the mosquito. It might be worth it grinding up Buzz for a little bit at some point, but for now, Turt's about as good as we're gonna get. Alright, let's see. Let's go to the Largemouth Bass and Sons first. Here, commotion, or perhaps a tussle, or a good old fashioned ruckus nearby. Investigating, you find that several vampires have a Gator Man pinned to the ground and appear to be trying to vampirize him. Grah! Hold still, will you? His neck is all scaly and tough. Did somebody bring a drill or a can opener or something? Hey, leave the Gator Man alone. I won't stand for you vampires going around inflicting your undeadness or disease or whatever it is on innocent people. I think it's a disease. We aren't undeads. Not like a zombie or a skeleton, anyway. The last Necromancer was killed decades ago. Hey, stop that. Yeah, don't talk with your mouth full. I mean, stop biting that guy. Mind business. He volunteered. Anyway, I'm finished. He. What? Really? Rawr, drink blood, power big! The game man stands up with a terrible red glow in his eyes. Drink blood, kill busy buddy! Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> Who the hell are you? <laughs> this is just random dude just showed up. Well, let's, uh, sacks of violence. Swamp gas swamp pyre. <laughs> A swamp pyre bat. Swamp pyre blood legger. You're just gonna dr double your moxie. That's fine. You can just die. We're gonna do a lot of damage, so we're gonna kill you. Whoa! <laughs> Alright, time to shoot this new weapon that we got. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Hobo Clobber. Ed North will clobber Swamp Pyre for 15 damage. Get him. Kapow. <laughs> oh. 
you want, you could you could make a suitcase out of the Gator Man's skin. Then you could have a suitcase that catches fire in the daytime to go with your one that catches fire at night. <laughs> 13 XP, 63 meat, hollow gator tooth. Use your muscle plus five, phys five physical damage and heals you for three HP. Huh, well that'd be good if I was a melee character. Condensed swamp gas. A lot of stuff happened <laughs> in that random fight. Oh, jeez. The sign identifies these waters as a site of historical importance. This pool is the birthplace of the largest mouth Luke, a bass present at the signing of the Declaration of Dependence. On August 2, 1792, he returned to his home water to die, but his body was never found. What is this? Talk to the puddle or the man? Puddle, please. Hello, sir. <laughs> It can't understand you. It's a puddle. <laughs> What's the matter with you? She's left me. Who left you? Amphibious truck. Oh, so not a person. No, I'm more. No, I'm more interested. Oh, I'm more interested in amphibious trucks. So what happened to your truck? Our truck. It's the company truck. We used it to take the fish to the market. A couple nights ago, I forgot to fill her up before bed, and that must have been really ticked her off. Because the next morning she was gone. No note, nothing. Are you suggesting this truck is sentient? It's funny, I wouldn't have thought so, but I can't see any other explanation for it running off the way it has. Could it have anything to do with the missing kids? Tom Tom and Kathy? I'll talk to Mr. Chapman or Miss Tracy about that. Maybe they took the truck? I don't know, it seems like a stretch. When did the children go missing? Same day as the truck, but I think that's probably a coincidence. <laughs> What's this puddle here? It's the gas I never gave her that night. It's here now, in our special place. Waiting for her, waiting for her to come home. I'm working as someone gone with the truck. With the gas left under, couldn't have gone further than a hundred miles. A hundred miles, okay, no, a hundred. Sorry, hundred is fisherman's ego. It means eleven. She'll be back. She has to come back. She'll run out of gas otherwise, and where will she be? <laughs> yeah. This guard seems, ha seems happy to be here, but skeptical of you. There's something fishy going on up in there. There's a key! Chum bucket is inscribed. A stranger is just a chum you haven't met yet. Those are decorative. And, and the chum inside it is the very first batch of chum ever made by largemouth bass and sons. Back in the summer of 1803. It reminds us of our humble beginnings. Oh, revolting. Chum bucket is inscribed. Champagne for my real chums. Real pain for my sham chums. <laughs> chum pain for my real chums. Real pain for my chum chums. <laughs> what lies behind that door is only for fishermen. What is it? Fish. Can I fish here? Ha! <laughs> Fishermen's cats are a touchy sort and regard unproven outsiders with the highest suspicion. Help you with something? Yeah, what's back there? Those are crew quarters. Wait, you live here? Where the fish live, we live. <laughs> Surely a fisherman yearns for a glorious death at sea, not to wind up behind a desk. Hello there, I wonder. Do you ever wish you had had a glorious death at sea? Ho oh, ho! Many a sea creature has tried to give me one, bucko, but before they could get their teeth in me, I'd rebone them six ways of Sontag. He spits a wad of chewing tobacco out the door. <laughs> Guy Chapman, Chief Reboning Officer, Large Mouth Bass and Sons. Are you here about Tom? I saw the posters about the missing children. Find one child and you'll find the other. My Tom has been lured into the lair of Occam's Gator by that Jezebel of a de deboner's daughter. A good and true fisherman led astray by that delinquent sorceress who never cared a Walt Whitman for wh what we do here with Large Mouth Bass. Occam's Gator? As, as long as there's been a large amount of bass and suns, there has been an Occam's Gator to our great misfortune. I'd venture that, that there's no creature of land nor sea quite so terrible. Twelve feet tall he is, red as a furnace, with smoke billowing from his nostrils. He and his rapacious appetites are a plague to our business. He'll eat everything we've got. Large amount of bass, everything. 
keeps me up at night, wondering what we did to deserve him. Is it a sin against the land to be to both debone and rebound fish? Perhaps, perhaps. But damn it, that's what give us our, gives our bass its sing. You're being a little sexist, don't you think? Not remotely. I'm not saying anything about her gender at all. I'm always saying she may have got my boy eaten by a gator man. When you throw words like Jezebel around, that's a little loaded. <laughs> Is it? Well, I didn't mean anything by it. I'm willing to change, but you have to be patient with me, alright? I'm old-fashioned, I can't keep up with all these new ideas your generation has. To. Gender penicillin. <laughs> well, fair enough. How is Kathy responsible? Oh, the arrogance of youth. Kathy Tracy never thought she had anything to fear from Occam's Gator. She didn't respect him. Several times I caught her attempting to summon the beast by shouting his name three times in a mirror or directly into the mouth of a bass. It was always going to end with her in Occam's belly. I just didn't think my Tom would be fool enough to go along with it. Do you think Tom could have run away on his own? Absolutely not. Tom's a third generation bass boy, proud and true. I just, last month he said, I'm excited about my future and reboning largemouth bass, Dad. Does that sound like the words of a boy with one foot out the door? No, there's a simpler explanation. The siren song of Kathy Tracy, who lures good men to the bellies of gators. I'm in. No, well, not so fast, goody shoes. Goody shoes? You haven't heard my terms yet. I don't want you I don't want you looking for Kathy on Tracy's dime. It's Tom that means saving, and he's saving from her. Do that and there's two hundred meat in your pocket, and my mother's fishing rod. Is this a special fishing rod? It is, I'll tell you why. It has never caught a fish. Oh, that sounds worse than a normal fishing rod. It has never caught a caught a, a fish. Always catches two. Don't know how it works. Don't want to know how it works. We just thank Poseidon for the bounty. <laughs> Alright. Fair enough. Hurrah. Now, I have no idea where you might find Tom, but what it, what I'll do is let you into our quarters in the back. I know he keeps a diary, though I've never been able to make sense of the thing. Fundamentally, the way your generation speaks is utter nonsense to me. The mad rambles of youth. Perhaps you'll understand it. Now bring him home. You hear me? I'm looking for someone myself. Charles Wallace. I know the name. Some fool wrote it on the missing poster I had up for Tom. I'm wondering who or what he is. Is he a fish? No. I'm not the person to ask. I'm a fisherman, friend. A bag is fish. You're looking for a human. You may want to ask for some sort of human fisherman, ha. Huh? You are a human fisherman. I'm glad you can joke through your son's abduction. <laughs> Fear did terrible things in the mind. I pray you never know what a torment like mine. I just said my friend was missing. Okay, I don't know where your friend is, alright? You rebone fish? I'm the chief rebounding officer here at Large Mouth Bass and Sons, like my father was before me, and etc. It's a wonderful life, a good family life. Are you saying you take out a fish's bones and put them back in? It's tradition! For generations, a Tracy has deboned the bass, and a Chapman rebones them. When people buy Large Mouth Bass and Sons bass, bucko, they expect to have it been deboned and reboned. If it's not, there's riots. Most of us are sons. Well. Back there is the mess. That's okay, I don't mind. Not messy, it's THE mess. As in, we have our meals. Oh, I thought they only called it a mess in the armed forces. And is fishing not the armed forces? What do we have? What do we use to hold the rods, hmm? I don't know your legs. <laughs> don't waste my time. Alright, let's find this journal. It's locked. Not anymore. That wasn't quite what you intended to do, but luckily you did find a manage to reveal a secret cache hidden behind the lockers. Search Tom's hole. Ugh. It's possible that a largemouth bass fisherman could do their job while sleeping in a nice off bed, but it's never been tried anywhere in this world. Oh, this is the mess. Unsuitable bones are ground up here into the thin meal. The sign claims that, that these are cups of homemade bone broth and you should take one. Do what it says. No, not one to question the instructions on the tiny sign. You grab a cup. Everything, is label Everything on the shelf is labeled hardtack. The non-perishable and long-lasting food stuff sustains the fishermen on their voyage from this building to outside this building. Broken bones pile high in the sea. Detritus from the experiments of an apprentice reboner. Reboner? I barely even know her. Hey, let's look at this diary. <laughs> this diary belongs to Tom Chapman. If found, please return to Large Bath Bass and Sons. For controversial thoughts and secret plans, turn to page 19. 
Fruition of no con for information of no consequence. Turn to page thirty-three. Animal ideas: three-toed squid, chihuahua, big, four-toed squid, honey-hating bear, rabbit, more teeth, faster chip, grandfather cat, bald or eagle, sleeping dog that lies, egg cat. Ugh. It's dangerous, but the only way we won't be followed is if we take the truck through the Gator Man camp. We'll ask Pete where it is. Well. We know where he went. I want to get much deeper right here. Let's go fit. I hope you're not planning on sticking a rod in there. Large mouth bass and sons of the exclusive license to fish in these waters. Is there any way I can fish here? No. <laughs> Large mouth bass and sons of the fishing rights. Fishing right makes fishing right. Okay, fine. <laughs> the mouth bass really are as large as they say. Times are tough here. I'll defend these fish with my life. Emptied to magnify the misfortune of my stolen daughter. Any idea who did this? I can't prove it yet, but I'll be damned if Alchem's gator did not have his claws in this. When did this happen? Three nights ago. I'm still in shock. I can't even muster the strength to close the safe. I can do that for you. It's not hard. Would you? Sure. Hey, bless you. <laughs> Through the knife of the deboner, dots still shape largemouth bass, and the world through our action. There are a legion who do not believe in what is tear down thy work. <sighs> Greetings, as a mariner, do you hate being stuck behind a desk? Excuse me, I make six figures a year behind this desk. And mind your manners, you're addressing Adam Tracy, chief deboning officer of Largemouth Bass and Sons. It must be Mar, the one who thrown in their lot with that wretch of the rebunner re next door. Oh, surprised to know your name? Well, the larger mouth bass have ears. Do they? <laughs> Do they have ears? I, I'd like to talk about your daughter. I don't see the point. You've thrown in your with your Chapman's already. Let's find your daughter. There's a catch. I'm not talking about... Yeah, we you know. Not Chapman. I know he's a, got a missing boy too, but you just can't... But you can't just involve a reboner in things like this. They're far too emotional. If you're dealing with me, you keep him out of it, right? Return 300 meat in my grandfather's fishing rod. How about throwing in fishing rights? You got your eyes on our large mouths, eh? I'll give you 10 minutes alone with the fish. How about that? No questions asked. Oh. What's so special with this fishing rod? What's special about it? You can catch things that you scientists say are impossible to find in the water. How about that? So it, does not, so it doesn't catch fish? Yes, fish, but also impossible things. Good. Now Peter, our guard by the front gate, was the last to see Occam's gator in the sickening flesh. Peter chased him off our property and revolted to a revolting little hamlet, but dared not enter it himself. I'll mark it on your map. I'm convinced that's where you'll find Occam's, and inside Occam's, Kathy. I'll just so you know, a fish we serve here are deboned, and that's just the way we like it. I don't want to see you putting new bones in a fish. You definitely won't see that. You're not close enough to read this. Yes, I am. <laughs> Cheeky ass game. I'm literally right there. A Aquatomy of Fresh and Salt Fish Game Fish. Cert cert certificate of Nomination for Award. Be, no be known that Adam Tracy was nominated for Aquatomy Award of Merit for Outstanding Achievement. Best Deboning. Bass. What's back here? Your corners? How did you know that? That's where Mr. Chapman has his. Maybe the two of you are more similar than you'd like to admit. Wash your mouth out with fish soap. Can I go inside? Can I go to that? <laughs> you better not. <laughs> yep. Alright, well. I guess let's go to the Gatorman Hamlet first. Burly hunter charging through the mud gives a holler. As he nears, you see he's toting a shotgun under one arm and carrying a pile of gator hides over his shoulder. 
What are you doing? Swamp's no place for a little kid. Gators eat you alive. Take this. Get yourself a seat on the next bus out. Whoa, that's not enough money for the bus. Fine, fine. Take it to go. Okay. Okay, thanks. Oh. Nom, 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 nom. Gulp. Nom, 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 nom. Another one of those Gatorman campsites. We the ones that came down. Charles came this way. It's another Gatorman camp, all right. And there's four more wrenches here. A 31, a 31, 30 seconds. A 63, 64 with this one. A 127, 128 one. And a 256, 256 one. Charles must carry one heck of a toolbox. <laughs> wrenches are laid out in the shape of an arrow, pointing towards a nearby hill. From the top of the hill, you can see some sort of fortress fort in the distance. Apparently hammered together out of scruffy, a scruffy rap metal. That's got to be where the Gatorman took him. He grabbed one of the wrenches and combined them with the other ones. He dropped a complete set. He got his wrench set, it looks like. Well. I've done nothing wrong. And on this fridge is a little busted. There's going to be a headache come lunchtime. No dice and no door opening either. Whoever smashed into the handle wanted to keep you out or to keep something in. A magical talking sandwich, maybe. With great effort, you force the door open. At least from his refrigerated cage, a cold man squirms out into the monk. Guess what true. My god, you are my savior. One more day trapped in there and I would have come completely to despair. Who are you? I am Fabian, an illustrator of the natural sciences. Arid steps, glistening bergs of ice, but let my interests uh, take me to these damp lands. I am in my soggy period. How did you get in there? I was struggling to sump so to sketch na native cypress, only to be caught by in a net by these gator-esque men. At first, they allowed me to roam within the confines of their, this camp, but when I shouted for help in a passing truck, I was put into the refrigerator. What truck? Oh, I hurtled through the camp like a bass out of, like a bass out of hell. It was a boy and a girl at the wheel, and I called out, Stop! I am a prisoner! Take me with you! But they drove on. What makes a person do that? Where was the truck headed? North of here, I'm sure of it. North, huh? And since that driver at Largemouth Bass and Sons was confident the truck he could only make it 11 miles at most, if it's a truck from 11 to this, between this camp and the fishery, seized with deductive euphoria, you do some quick calculations, which in your haste come out to be, they come out very long, very wrong. You do them again, not rushing it this time, and produce a promising lead. An amphibious truck? <laughs> if you want to leave, the way out is more or less clear. I do want to leave, that's a good sense. If we ever meet again, it would honor me to paint your portrait. I am an artist, as you know. I cannot paint you right away, for as I am in my soggy period. If I conclude that work, or if you become soggy, well, who knows? Am I not soggy enough? Not for academia, no. Oh, oh well. So, Alright. Guards stop in their tracks and start sniffing your sushi. They're almost certain to notice you if you get any closer. Snake put is an option here. What do you want to do? Away from them. Recharge? Oh! Recharge! <laughs> nom, 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 nom. Amphibious truck? You there! An excessively jovial man struts out from behind the trees. Look at these parts, is it? Ever heard of our mud henge? I bet you don't know it's actually 1.3 times larger than any comparable henge you care to name. What is mud henge, good sir? Mud henge. Go to mud henge! <laughs> That's silly. Welcome to mud henge, a mission to me. Someone's gonna lose their job at the fence factory. Very clean booth for such a muddy henge. Welcome to Mud Henge. What is this place? Friend, it's Mud Henge. What's that? It's one of the area's most popular henges. Folks travel from all over to see this mysterious mud. I've heard of Stonehenge. Is it like that? I don't see the comparison. You don't? Look, we could talk for hours about Stonehenge. Stonehenge is big. Stonehenge is strong. I've gone over all of this, so with respect, what I'm interested in talking about is Sto Mudhenge, which is a formidable monument to its own right, and so much more than just 
than a first draft of Stonehenge, as they sometimes say in the magazines. What's so special about Midhenge? Special? Well, during the Swamp Solstice, it's said that the needle of a compass placed upon the central altar will point not to west, but secret west. Or lies the thing you need the most. That's special enough for you? When is the Swamp Solstice? If you're in a swamp, it's pretty much always a Swamp Solstice. What is Secret West? I know, Mystician. A Secret West is the direction in which lies that thing your heart is most missing. It's said that a compass laying on the altar of Mudhenge during the Swamp Solstice was point to Secret West. That was the object of the Mudhenge challenge. Chowhenge. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but of course, we don't run the Chowhenge anymore. Too hard. Too many missing presumed de deads. What's, what does that mean? Thing your heart is most missing? Well, it's kind of up to you. Up to your heart, that is. Could be a secret crush, a new job, maybe just a piece of bread. Guess they could have helped me find. Guess that could have helped me find Charles, huh? Charles, is that your secret crush? Maybe, maybe you're my secret crush. Look, I'm married. I like to visit my end. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> well, why wouldn't you? It's the best and most mysterious. Henge is side of the border. A mission is to me. What border? I believe it's all of them. Here you go. I knew you wouldn't be able to come all this way without seeing the famous Mud Henge. Here's a pamphlet that goes over just about everything we know about the history of the ancient monument. Don't be a stranger. So could I have just gone in anyway? Stinky. Ooh. There's some hobo code. According to this, there's an old boxcar nearby that the railroad company abandoned when it sank into the swamp. Sounds interesting. Oh, those are doors. Let's head over to the east. Oh. This crazy gator man appeared out of nowhere and is champing at, champing at the bit to make sure you're nowhere five minutes from now. Clean his clock. Clock clean. The Gator Man rallies for another round, but a hand rises from the swamp and drags him down screaming. Whew! What have we got? There's a complete change of clothes in the sack. A, a black embossed card sticking out of the back pants pocket. Drowned Mary's crown is buried past the Hue Tower. The nudist creed. Nothing is worn. Everything is visible. Hmm. Oh, there's another gator person look like. Wait, that's a different area, looks exactly the same, but there was a gator person over here. Hmm. Person of gator persuasion. Well, as fascinating as it is going through all these weird teleporty things, let's uh go elsewhere. To the sunken box car, perhaps. Ah, I found you. How you holding up, Professor? 
Why? I have not been for enter it's been so entertained since the development of infinitesimal calculus. How'd you find me? Well, after you vanished through that portal, I simply wandered around to locate again. It's fortunate that I guessed correctly. Yeah, no kidding. This looks very dangerous. Climb in anyway. <laughs> We're just standing on an angle. Everything has predictably fallen off this table. I mean, it makes sense. These poetry books are all full of slant rhymes. Whoa, really? This would fail a railroad safety inspection for at least two reasons. You're perplexed with the hobo's decision to sleep with his head pointed downhill. It's a diagonal hobo, although I suppose from your perspective he looks normal. Oh, hi, sorry. Everything's italicized. <laughs> oh, hi. Sorry, I didn't know anyone was living here. I suppose I should stop being surprised by that. That's quite all right. I'm Pepperidge Dauphin. Welcome to my humble abode. Thanks, I'm Martini. Nice boxer you got here, apart from being a little steep. Steep? Oh, yes, you know. I've grown so accustomed to the tilt, I hardly notice anymore. Apart from when I try to play marbles. Your game must be, must really go be going downhill. Yes, quite. Your accent is different from most hobos I've met. Well, my fame is from old money, you see. How old? Old enough that it all turned to dust. All that remains is a rambling old manor house that I can't afford to maintain, so I decided that would be a splendid opportunity to expand my horizons. The horizon is typically a bit more level. Why are you living in a boxcar in a swamp? Well, to be honest, it's been difficult to, to part with the old estate. This is as far as... This is as far as I've been able to get before the homesickness becomes overwhelming. Oh, how bittersweet. Indeed. I wonder, could you spare the time to help me? I could be done. I could be done with the place if I had a proper souvenir. Specifically, my fa my father's collection of antique padlocks. And you can't get them yourself because of the memories. It's more of a lack of memories. I forgot where the keys are. Sure. Thank you. There are eleven locks altogether. Except they won't actually be all together, will they? I'm afraid not. No. Here, I'll mark this location on the house on your. Is this a sponge? There's also something I should tell you about the house. Oh good, here it comes. I just wanted to let you know, there aren't any ghosts haunting the property. There aren't any? That's correct, not a one. My family has never suffered any violent or traumatic deaths. This is something you felt you had to warn me about? Not really a warning as such, just thought you might like to know. Huh. Well, okay. Thanks. I'll be, back. I'll be right back with your 11 padlocks. <laughs> Well, that's something you still want to see every day. A big haunch of raw meats hanging from a tree branch in the middle of the swamp. Or at least I don't see that every day. Maybe you spend more time in the swamps than I do. Anyway, not wanting to let a perfectly good hunch go to waste, you approach it. And with the cartoonish spring, you and Dr. Adams find yourselves trapped in a big net hanging from a tree. Well, dang it. Hurrumph, quite unacceptable. After a time, a band of gator men arrive and are plenty delighted at having caught some prey. Haha! <laughs> Human dumb trick easy! That hurts, but I guess I don't have much of a leg to stand on. Haha! <laughs> no, eat leg! I meant like a rhetorical leg. Eat both! <laughs> well, yeehaw to you too, gator mens! So I can one shot this gator, so let's hurt a different one. I think I've got some baseballs around here. I can throw one. Heal! Mmm, 
thank you. Alright, perish. You won, that'll teach them to uh, secure a cat human, uh, to uh, capture him being in an obvious trap. Gator stick. Gator cheese. Nasty pastry. Swamp haunch. You also gather some gator heights for that, for that hunter, which is way less grizzly than it sounds. The gator men are just carrying these around. <laughs> these are the hides of a gate or a man. All right, well, let's investigate this house. <clears throat> Excuse me. Looks like this car was left to rot. Unfortunately, as it hasn't yet run enough free to pass the locked door. Jimmied up with a wire coat hanger. You unlock the, you unlock the car, destroying the hanger in the process. He searched the car. It's empty except for the glove box, which turned out to actually be a key box. The key inside is not the key to this car. If you had any sense of humor like mine, you'd agree this is a real shame. Look, you, you pop the lock off and the door latches with an ominous creak. Orc bench covered with tools. All rest past the point, point of useless, even as bludgeons. Old Dolphin never got sick of tires. Some say that the most powerful tool is a padlock. It's really m more the opposite of a tool, though, because it obstructs rather than facilitates what you're trying to do. These cinder blocks are totally waterlocked. Oh, waterlogged. Oh, that's not good. One of those cinder blocks is standing way too close to the others. You explain personal boundaries to it and perform a quick procedure to make it a little less creepy. <laughs> Stop being creepy, you little fucker. Creepy ass cinder blocks, you know, you got you got you gotta teach them. We can still get more stuff out of that book? Jeez. How much max HP do we have at this point? 17 max HP from that one perk. That's nuts. This tree has a hole in it. Conveniently, the hole is slightly larger than your hand. Honestly, for what it, what is essentially a horror game, we've had too many op few opportunities for you to stick your hand in this just dark hole. So I reach into the dark hole, and it's damp and ominous and... Ay! You find a key. Sorry, that scream wasn't really justified. Those serving carts that they use in posh hotels and in posh manor houses, apparently, with a big silver platter covered with a dome shaped lid. Just the right size to hide a severed head or a roast of some kind. Cautiously reach out and grip the handle, and then take a deep breath. Slowly, you lift the lid, tilting your head to peek underneath. Oh, it's empty. Oh, well. Enough fine trying to defeat an army, if only you could get past the padlock, and if you were in command of the world's hoity toitiest military. Clean the well lighted corner. There's a padlock on the fridge. In Pepperidge Father's house, there are many drawers. Rifle through them. Lots of stuff in here. Dire corn holder. <laughs> a match. Junk mail. And one of the padlocks. There's nothing under the drawers. What about the sink? <laughs> Fish in a sack. There's extra meat on the line. What a silly game. This oven is full of gross, steamy swamp worms. Ugh. One of those old fridges that people sometimes got locked in accidentally and asphyxiated. Oh wait, they're, that's still all fridges these days. Maybe that's why it's padlocked. Click. The fridge is empty of both expired food and expired hide and seekers. You find a key and inexplicably frozen a block of ice though. The humanity has turned most of these dry goods into stale goods. Almost nothing has escaped the moisture, almost. Fruit cocktail. Mmm. Unfortunately, breakfast has not been served. Store's padlocked. Goldilocks Dolphin. 
France worked off and died of natural causes. 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 This couch faces the wall. It must have been the dolphin family's punishment couch. <laughs> Dolphins use one toy at a time, just like the rest of us. Hmm, it doesn't work. Maybe there's something wrong with the tank. Well, here's a problem. There's a key stuck in the in the float valve hinge flange. There we go, now we can flush it. This medicine cabinet is security locked. To me, it's full of deadly poisons. This bathtub is full of steaming blood. Oh, no, wait. The red is just light coming through a stained, stained glass rose hanging in the bathroom window. That doesn't really explain why the water is still hot, though. A nice warm bath causes ice to relax and it drops the key with a grateful sigh. Let's fish. In the hot water. Hot bathtub. <laughs> Glob of wet hair and some meat. Mmm. Delicious. Just some more dirty water. More glob of wet hair. Mmm. 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 Oh, hey, we got the, uh. We got another padlock. We got a rhino balm and, uh, mercury eye drops. This product is safe and effective and don't ever let anyone tell you any different. <laughs> Some dirt in a planter, which was simply a plant in a planter when stood. A comfortable looking bed, free of blood stains or regularly person shaped lumps under the blanket. Oh, shiny! Someone must have traded in a shiny key shaped tooth. Work pants and a wire coat hanger. Nice. Four physical armor. Okay, that's pretty good. Shuffle of books about sports. The titles are all too boring for me to even tell you what they are. Nothing's hiding underneath this bed except dust. The toy box is disappointing and empty. Not even a BB gun or a creepy doll. Maybe the doll's hiding somewhere. Ooh. Shiny key unlocks this one. We got another key padlock. There's a little jewelry box on the table. Contains to your not surprise jewelry. Perfectly normal jewelry. An old engagement ring. Uh, a castanet ring. Jazz hands also increases your muscle mysticality by three. Hmm. That'd be useful if I use jazz hands more. Because jazz hands boosts my moxie by a significant amount. But. Orca Strike does damage and boosts my stats, so it's generally better. Fancy Nightstand. The, fa the Fancy Nightstand's contents are disappointingly non-fancy. A battery's nice. And a disappointing key. This bed looks inviting, but, but no nobody seems to have accepted the invitation for quite some time. The cedar chest is locked and easily big enough to hide a skeleton in, or even a whole body. Radium Rouge. Disappointing key. Another padlock. This bridge is strewn with bits and gizmos and bits of gizmos. Amongst all that, you find what looks like a miniature radio card from Driftwood. A radio small enough to carry? Amazing! Maybe if you listen to it periodically, it'll warn you about any nearby monsters that are actually manifestations of your repressed traumas. Or maybe it'll just give you baseball scores. Some of that dolphin was superstitious enough not to store any padlocks on the east side of this attic. That's how his family gets curses. Not motivated to search them. Who knows what grizzly things they might find.
Seven of the eleven thingamajigs. Mm. Put it right to your ear. Clarence, I'm so grateful that our family has never suffered from supernatural curses, serial murder, demonic corruption, or plague. I agree, dear. We certainly have been fortunate and doubtless rain so. Those voices are so eerie. Ah, uh, same thing. None of them are even named Clarence. Alright, let's see where else we can find, because we need at least a few more need at least four more keys. Alright, let's change the different shoes. <laughs> Hi, Mar. Bye, Mar. trying to poke around and do everything. I can, at least. Hold the radio up to your ear. River Ralphie, says a woman's voice. He must have never opened the door of strangers. A, boy, a boy's voice replies. Okay, Mom, because it might be a kidnapper or murderer, right? Well, I'm sure that never happened, but it might be a vacuum cleaner salesman, and we already have one. Ah, I see, I gotta like, listen to different radio frequencies around the house, I think. You hold the radio up to your ear, you hear a woman's voice saying, Please be careful around those kitchen knives, Rebecca, they're very sharp. And keep them that way because, counterintuitively though it may be, the old kitchen knives actually cause more accidents. Yes, mother, I understand. Okay, yeah, that's the stranger's one. You hold the you hold the radio up to your man's voice says, Ralphie, why on earth do you keep flushing this fish zester down the commode? Have you been possessed by some other world leader demonic force? No, Dad, I just thought it'd be a funny place to hide it. Hmm.
Mom, Mom, a terrible ghoul stole the key to my nightstand. Now, dear, don't call your brother Ralphie a terrible ghoul. He probably hit the key in the pot of plate in the hallway like he always does. Oh! Motherfuckers. There's a creepy music box inside the drawer. <laughs> For goodness sakes, Agnes, you're obsessed. Obsessed with taping things into the packs of paintings, just like your aunt, one-eyed Calparina Dolphin. You probably did die. You'll probably die peacefully in your sleep, just like she did. Maybe I search behind that one, behind the painting. Sticky lock, huh? It's not that one. Gee, Pop, where'd you get all that treasure? Is it a cursed pirate horde stolen from ruins of ancient civilization? Haha, <laughs> no, son. I like that. Just sound investment in the perfectly normal and moral financial markets. <laughs> Great. Who stole my golden arm? Then a boy's voice says, "Oh, come on, sis. Do you ever know, do you even know any other ghost stories? That's the only one you ever tell." That's the painting one. Okay, so it's not there. How many locks do we have? Eight. Tool chest contains one tool, one tool, one key, which I guess also counts as a tool, albeit an extremely specific one. A handsaw, ooh. Oh jeez, is that blood all over the- oh no, it's just rust. <laughs> like, this is like a gag horror place. A rusty key. Okay. So that's nine. You open the cabinet, turn the door, and, and examine the s stacks of fine bone china. Wait, bone china? Perhaps human bone china? Oh no, the very mark on the bottom is a pretty well-known company, so probably not. Anyway, you find a really fancy hat. <laughs> that leaves me with 10 padlocks, I think there's 11. Oh wait, maybe there's just 10. Oh, there's definitely 11, because there's, there's another place up top. I gotta figure out where the other key is. It's not there. Let's see.
punishment couch. <laughs> Padlocks on the dinner table. That's what the rule and observation. breathing apparatus if we want to go down there. I have an idea what I can do for that. This is just the good parts of some blood. <laughs> Bahuga. Uh, if we get two more muscle, we can grab a uh, this. for free. Uh, let's see, gift shop. I think we can buy some pants to give us muscle. Yep, some of the sit, the sit sport shorts. These shorts, they sit on the part of them used for sitting. Perfect. That should give us some muscle. Now we can go get that, that diving helmet, which might be what we need. Just a hunch, though. Otherwise, I don't really know what I'm looking for. Oh, thanks for the chemicals, dude. Oh, perfect. <laughs> well, let's go back to, uh... The Big Moist. And back to the Dolphin House and go downstairs. Gain street hot armor. So as also have I've consumed so much asbestos that my beard is nearly 70% composed of fluff. Perfect. Oh, wait, there's a... Rusty can of Vikini. Vikin Soyce. These sadly ruined books all have titles like Solved Mysteries and Exciting Tales of Nonviolent Crime. Oh, it's a chest full of riches, possibly cursed riches. Not that a possible curse is going to stop you from taking them, of course. Clammy scarf, scarf. Second whitest scarf you've ever owned. I was hoping to find a key down here.
Hmm. Pretty sure I just finished searching this, but I want to be sure that I'm not going to miss something. There's not really any other places on this in this house to search. Wait, we can go back to the sunken box car and see if that's enough, but I highly doubt it. Monster Shack. The big sign that says Monster Shack. <laughs> Oh, there's, that means there's still another frickin' padlock, some another key somewhere. Hmm. Well, that's a little annoying. I can't have any trouble finding that other key. More miscellaneous chemicals. Nice. Clarence, why are you lying on the floor under your workbench? Are you, are you alright? Were you attacked by a burglar or an axe murderer? Come on, I'm just practicing changing the oil in our car. Oh my god, we found it. Okay. Jeez. Can't believe I didn't listen to the radio in there of all places. Perfumed wedding veil, huh? This will come in handy if you ever decide to save money by getting married at the city dump. <laughs> well, I think that's technically the end of this quest thing, so let's go back and turn this in. It was interesting and just kind of funny. A big shiny treasure chest. What's well, a tussock? It's like a big clump of grass or a small hill. That's not really the important part here. How about that treasure chest? I thought that was a cassock. Wait, no, that's a thing priests wear, like a close-fitting robe. I think you're thinking of a Cossack. That's a cat. That, this is a cassock. It's not a Cossack. That's a 17th century Eastern European cavalry soldier. Pretty sure you meant cavalry. Alright, that's it. I'm done. Forget the chest. There's no chest anymore. Just get on to the next thing. Sheesh, touchy. <laughs> or just pestering the DM, basically. That's funny. I hear your locks. Thank you so much. You didn't run into my grandmother by any chance, did you? What? No, she's supposed to be there? No, that would be been highly unusual as she had been, considering she'd be died more than 30 years ago. Here's your padlocks. Marvelous. Once I reaccustom myself to staying on level ground, I'll be on my way. There's a big hobo camp near Ocean City that you might be interested in. Can I, I can give you directions. Ah, excellent. I think I'll head that way now. Perhaps I'll see you there. Nice. Alright, well, first, firstly, let's uh, get back into our uh, not diving helmet. Doesn't really do us any good. It's got any moxie, it's pretty cool. Where's this? That's what I like to see. Physical armor and range weapon attacks. How's the jamming going? We're doing pretty good. We just we just found we just finished finding eleven padlocks for this dude. And this like really cheesy like not totally, like, absolutely uninteresting, unhaunted house just full of, like, weird, like, horror jokes. <laughs> Which is fun. You had to, like, listen to a radio to listen to ghosts talk about the non-murder that was going on. Alright, so we're supposed to probably be going to the amphibious truck here to find some, ki find these kids. In a gloomy grove of sunken cypress trees, a well-muscled woman stands waist-deep in the opaque bog. Ooh. Her hands rest on the pommel of a sword, its blade lodged in the muck. Catches your eye because it's not the type of thing you tend to see on the east coast. What sword is that? This is the blade of your great of your great aunt. Many moons ago, it was entrusted to my family for safekeeping. Now it is yours to reclaim for a cost. Why do I have to pay for my family's sword? The security guaranteed by my family is unique. It comes with a great price. Your great aunt knew this. This is why she placed the blade in our care. What great aunt? 
if you've gotten your lineage child, time was every time was every tavern and meeting house kept a place by the fire for Hilda Teeny. Okay, what's the cost? In time, I shall ask of you a boon. You should be obliged to grant it. Sure, I can do a boon. Let's have the sword. You got a, you got an item. Great ant's broad, great sword. The sword has a satisfying heft. You can see why your great aunt liked it so much. What well, becomes something quite unsatisfying, something that might make you feel almost queasy and a little cursed. Swamp case. This case really grinds your gears. Perhaps that lady from the swamp will tell you soon about the boons she wants in exchange for this thing's removal. You gased me? It is a simple magic. Bind you to your oath until such time as I have need your service. On that day, I will find you. Can't we just do the boon thing now? I don't want this sword anymore. But she's gone. Slipped away in the dark waters of the swamp. Better be a good sword. It's a great sword. Better be a good great sword. <laughs> oh. Well, here's the truck. There's nothing amphibious about this truck. The truck has been abandoned for some time. There is nobody inside unless they are very small and hiding. Are they small and hiding? No. Search seats. The newspaper left on the passenger seat is open for the classified page. Circle our advertisements for Mr. Rat's Hotel for Working Women and the Docks. Take the paper. You don't need it. Say today's news. Search the center of the seats. The gas tank is located underneath the driver's seat, which has the advantage of lowering the truck's center of gravity. This gas tank is empty, which has the disadvantage of the truck not working. You also notice a tiny glint of metal. A key. Small L B and S lock key, okay. Eat the, eat the engine. It's far too large to eat. It's just not possible to eat an engine. It would kill you even to try. Girding yourself against the overbearing heat, you wrench open the cowl and peer through the smoke, only to find that somebody had beaten you to it. The engine has already been eaten. <laughs> next time, next chance I get, I'm eating an engine. Sure. The engine has been eaten. No! <laughs> uh... I wanted to eat the engine. <laughs> well, let's go back to Largemouth Bass and Sons and see if we can find uh, where this key goes to. A flash of light cuts through the trees. The glare passes and then you see it, poking its head over above the canopy. A telescope. Why, you fancied a telescope ever since you were you were a, a child. You'd press your nose to the window of the telescope shop for hours until the proprietor would run out and threaten you to tan your glutes with a tripod. And I still want a telescope. And you've waited long enough. Go get your telescope. <laughs> this, fucking, this fucking game is nutty. The sign says, take a bottle of ba bass oil. Why, it's good to the table. Bottles, crates, and the whole thing. You now notice the reverse of the sign. It says, if you can... Take the sign. Just sell it if you can. Huzzah! You break the bonds of the glue with the snapping, satisfying thwarp. <laughs> the refrigerator hums with quiet menace, or maybe it's the motor. The one item inside is a sardine salad sandwich in a cardboard box. The box is labeled Adams. Do not eat. Do eat. <laughs> ah! The sandwich smacks of something foul and deeply wrong. Is this the food that rotten itself to punish your minor transgression? It reminds you of the story of your friend, Eve, who ate a forbidden window display sandwich and was cast out of the Garden of Eaton restaurant. Like, e like Eve, you have tasted a forbidden sandwich and must face the consequences. <laughs> of course, that's how that goes. Ah, thank god, the forbidden sandwich effect's gone. There's a bass thong and a sink in each, in each of the drawers. Hello, kitty. Fishing cats are slow to trust. Only true loyalty to the freshman's cause will win her over. Oh, here's the, here's the key to the door. A navy blue slicker is the sole resident of the coat rack. Fierce rummaging yields a letter to the right, in the right pocket. The envelope appears unopened. Kathy's letter. A letter from Kathy Tracy, addressed only to Dad. The post office will never be able to deliver that. The austere bedding testifies to the Tracy family's rigorous asceticism. One must purge body and mind of all comfort and distraction to achieve the hyper focus of a bass fisherman. <laughs> Secret candies? A bass fisherman should not be vulnerable to such te such temptations. Times are tough at Largemouth Bass and Sons, and pillows are in short supply. 
The Spartan matches his whole no secrets. 16 teeth. Tooth Fairy skipped this swamp for a while. <laughs> oh no. That's horrible. Arjun bass eyes peek through the slats in the locker. Why why the fuck do they have bass in there? You're not supposed to be in this room. It's better if Adam doesn't see you leave through this door. Better for whom? Better for you. Now nah, I'm going out. Hold a minute, how'd you get in that room? Cursed key. Cursed key? We'll give it a rest, alright? You're too young to be playing around with that sort of thing, I'm sure. I love my cursed key. This generation, what the f- It's like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all kids? Read the letter. The envelope isn't sealed. You slide it open with these. Dad. All anyone cares about in this family is large mouth bass. Well, I'm sick of it. Ain't I a person? Ain't I deserve of being cared about too? I'm leaving, Dad, for a place where dreams are possible. He ain't never gonna find me because you don't know where that is. Love, Dad. Love, <laughs> love, love, Kathy. P.S. Hi to Mom. Well, that's fun. Gatorman Fortress is where, um... Uh, let's go to let's go to get our man fortress. Why not? Hear a commotion, or perhaps a tussle, or a good old-fashioned ruckus nearby. Uh, we'll just uh, leave them alone. The other man just gets up vampirized anyway, and then it's like I'm gonna eat your blood or whatever. Shadow, po ooh, shadow bomb. Poop. These Gator Men aren't doing enough damage to each other for to see like a real fight. Either they're just sparring or just how Gator Men arguments work. Either way, they aren't paying any attention to you. This filthy pipe must lead inside, presumably to the bathroom part of inside if the smell's any indication. Well, Stent Armor it is! How much do I have by uh, by virtue of my character my effects? Let's see. Two stent charmer. So I currently got two stent charmer from just our perks. Three from inherent stent. Just so I need two more from an item, which I should easily have. So let's see. That's an awful sound. <laughs> the pipe turns out to be much longer than you expected with a lot of twists and turns. Clearly, efficient airflow and ventilation systems is not a big priority in Gator Man architecture. You eventually come out in either a garbage processing center or a kitchen. Maybe both. Maybe both. Let's see how cold it is outside because like I'm chilly as shit right now. Uh temperature it says 16 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know if I trust that. I don't know. Maybe I should just put on like a jacket or something indoors. An indoor jacket. Indoor jacket. Perhaps I will just do the. Oh, hi, worm. I didn't know you were down there. Oh, I'll pick you up and hold you for a second. Give you some attention. Hi, Baba. Hey, dude. What's up? Mwah! Big boy. Big, big, big boy. 
Okay, he's probably not very thrilled from that. Ugh. There you go, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna legitimately go grab my jacket, and I'll be right back. <laughs> Jacket secured. <laughs> if there's ever any evidence of this scarf being used to strangle someone, that it's all been thoroughly washed away. Let's see what we got here. Even if Gator Men bother to cook their meals, they probably don't cook them in an electric stove staying in 18 inches of water. This is a kitchen, only in the sense that it's a place where food is prepared. There's nothing of value on the shelves, probably even by Gator Man standards. It's one of those fridges, you know, the ones hanging on big rusty chains. The whole chain wasn't attached very well, and the whole thing comes loose. You got an item. A refrigerator on a chain. <laughs> what? Neither the refrigerator nor the chain is in very good shape, but you're probably not going to find a better version of this very specific combination. <laughs> huh. Alright. Remains of an awful, awful meal. What? I guess my better judgment, I'm going to ring the dinner bell. <laughs> it would be nonsensical and cruel to ring the dinner bell without making dinner first. Nonsensical and cruel is the Gator Man standard behavior. Let's not sink to that level. Charles, he's in the cage. He's the cage with Charles in it. Charles! Shh! They'll hear you. Oh, right. Boy, I'm glad to see you, kid. Thought I was a goner. You're an adventurer sort type and all. You know how to pick a lock? Only with an appropriately shaped key. I'll have to get it off their leader, then. I think his room is down the other end of the hall. Bunch of gator men. Wait, what's the collective noun for gator men? A cruelty? A depravity? A butthole? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, anyway, this group of gator men seems more concerned with the possibility of someone breaking it in their front door than sneaking in through the kitchen. S sneak attack them. You suddenly creep up behind one of the gator men and knock him out with a quick trick in the back of his head. The other two seem shocked by this display of poor sportsmanship. Ha! Got four AP. Well, this, one's, this one's gonna eat a mushroom, which is unfair because I want a mushroom. Let's see, we'll be we'll do uh, twenty-seven damage. So let's get this thing. That's one of these below twenty-seven HP. I need to kill this one because it's gonna do a lot of damage. It's gonna hit Turt though, so Turt will be fine. Pew! <laughs> Got him with the rock. You won, now their collective noun can be an unconsciousness. <laughs> XP, meat, swamp mushroom. This 
the swamp mushroom does not appear in any mycology text because mycologists famously refuse to get their shoes wet. Best let sleeping gators lie. Hi, worm. What's up, dude? What are you doing? You can, you can hang. No, don't get on. You little jerk. <laughs> He jumped on my desk, looked at me, and then jumped on my computer, and then jumped on off my computer on top of the bookshelf. Forge presumed for hammering on terrible gator metals. I was doing freaking pull-ups on freaking hooks. Impressive. Shoebox is waterlogged. A real surfeit of nouns. Wide lo wide loafers. Why? Oh no, these are gonna be terrible, aren't they? It <laughs> kinda. A big rusty chemical barrel. It says chloroform, and so does it smell like a woof. I see what you're going for, and sure, filling a place with chloroform would knock out all your guard, all the guards. But it also knocked you out, and the water you're standing in is also knee deep. You can double check your to-do list if you want, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't have a drown scheduled for today. Well, let's go fishing anyway. Sleepy, a sleeping dirty sandfish. A napping mucky worm fish. <laughs> One wet cigarette. <laughs> this is one of the only objects capable of giving you cancer and a tapeworm at the same time. <laughs> Times on the shelf are too nasty for you to look at, little in touch. Rusty chain, ooh. These animals are exercising and also blocking your way to whatever's at the end of the hall. Perhaps it's something important because then they always use where important stuff usually is, right? Well, there's a lot of dudes. Uh oh. See what sort of goodies we have available to use to make this a little less um, spooky. Well, we can all enemies for 13 spooky damage. Hmm. Yeah, it seems like a good spot to use one of these. There's just a lot of enemies. healing for you. Cha-cha-cha! Uh, actually, I'll probably just murderize one of these. It'll probably kill this one because it's going to heal like 10 HP. Hey, bud. Hopping around like like a big hopping hopper, huh? Hey, bud. I have a cat on my desk. <laughs> oh. Hey, buddy. Cat holding break. <laughs> that 
That's my nose, dude. <laughs> Thankfully, you can play this game entirely with mouse, so... I have cat, cat in one arm, hand on the other, ha other hand on the mouse. Advantage of like being on my chest, to, like licking my nose. <laughs> you want now you can find out what's in the hole. I hope it's cool. Swamp mushrooms and turn turk grow stronger. Yay! Go away! <laughs> hmm, do you think the Gator Man's taste in the books are as bad as everything else about them? Alright, Cat has been returned to my desk. You can just lay here, bud. Maybe if your butt's not in the air, though. <laughs> right in the... Keeping the rest off your iron fist. Don't eat your henchmen. Tips for new rulers. Spot welding guide for ad hoc fortresses. Yeah, these are all pretty much what you'd expect, except, well, there's one that might seem more interesting. Making the most of your stabbings. Okay, that sounds interesting. <laughs> Good for bosses, I bet. Skin the book. There are so many places to stab a person that have never even occurred to you. Nope, nope, don't get up there, bud. It's not good for him to jump on my bookcase because, well, he's heavy, and I don't want him to hurt himself jumping off like like a butthole. Sure, the most painful place to stab each of the most common categories of stabbing victim. You can memorize it, but take some time. You practice your stabbing on a nearby tree, but you don't have a knife handy, so use the book. It is destroying the process. Set more up meat drops. Nice. I need more XP for that. That's okay. This hole leads to a massive underground chamber. You found it. The least comfortable chair in the world. This is the, this is the real seat of power. Oh, hey, we just, um. I choose not to be cold. Hot armor. There are hundreds of these stories. They're all like this. Nice. Private property scram! What is going on with this? You don't know what this object is, but... Oh, wait. It's got blood altar over it. It's an altar. Uh, where did he go? I 
I serious, go away. Oh, we're starting to get to like cursed shit. Whatever it is, it's extremely broken. Grief, you wouldn't have fixed it if you'd known it would be so ungrateful. Oh shit! He needs three additional combat items around. That's broken. God damn! I'm warning, kill you. Is this some kind of ancient temple guardian or something? It's shooting out a bunch of tightly focused beams of light that science doesn't yet have a name for. Which you can probably assume you don't want touching you. Oh shit. Moxie go! Moxie go! <laughs> You worst, I destroy! Goliath, kill! Oh. Well. I mean, it did. Whoa, geez, that thing really did a number on this guy. That's <laughs> fish in his blood pile! <laughs> Waste not gator blood. Want not gator blood. You poke around in the mulch until you find something that looks more or less like an old iron key, except kind of blurry. It sizzles and twitches in your hand as you pick it up. This has to be the key, Charles mentioned. Look at that glying, hulking life in it all. There doesn't seem to be anything beyond it, and it looks oh, like it could no. swash you. Hello, Jedi. Thank you for the raid. Welcome, everybody. We are playing Shadows Over Loathing, and we just watched a giant golem step on this gator man. <laughs> and turn him into pulp. Hi, Jedi. How are you doing? Happy holiday. Let's go back and unlock Charles. You, you make your way quickly back to the room where he is being held. Woo! Found the key? I think so. It's kind of weird though. Yeah, I don't like the looks of that at all. I bet dollars to donuts it's the artifact we're looking for. It couldn't possibly be the key to this random Gator Man cage in the middle of nowhere then, could it? Well, it might have been some kind of related key related flowers. Normally I'd advise against using it, but I don't see any other way out of this mess. Okay, here it goes. I. Woo, spooky! Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Playing this game is always a good time. We're doing nonsensical things, as always. The key shifts unpleasantly in your hand, buzzing and clicking through a jerky slideshow of shapes, as though searching for the particular slice of a higher dimensional object that will fit this lock. When it finally finds the right one, it jerks forward in your hand and twists. The lock clicks open. Your hand feels numb. Thanks, Mar. Thought for sure my bacon was well and truly fried. Don't mention it, Charles. Let's just get back the he let's just get the heck out of this dump. Well, no further cause to stick around apart from any unfinished side quests you may have, but you can always come back for them later. Yeah, let's go, Charles, back to town. Mar, you found the cursed artifact and brought Charles back home safely. I can't express how grateful I am. I don't know what we'd do without him. Thank you so much. Oh, it was well, it wasn't nothing, but you know. Yeah, I get it. Don't forget to uncurse the thing before you go to bed. This key seems like it has the power to open any lock. That could be extremely useful. Or would be really all that bad if I didn't curse it? Well, I'm not going to drag you into the machine and force you to, but yes. I don't actually know what would happen if you don't curse it. I assume it would be pretty bad. Look, you cursed all the other things, right? Yeah. Well, let's see how... Let's see what kind of a shit show we get in going to uh, uncurse the key. Key jumps up to the roof of the dome and sticks there, shaking and keening. That's the sound Key's making against the metal. Lights in the store wine flicker and then cut out completely. Wait it out. Only when the power is out does the key calm down, give up the most odious parts of, part of itself to the machine, and drop back down to your lap. Light returns to the store. Fixed it. We have a spare bulb under the cat. <laughs> under the cat, right? That's, that's right where you keep the light bulbs. 
The key's curse lingers in the machine. It is, of course, it is itself, an arcane lock to be solved only by a production of a consciousness. Well, let's see what the curse of the key has in store for us. <laughs> We're an old tiny mustache dude. I have assembled everyone just as you asked, Detective. The victim's wife and the two men who were present in the Master Card at the time. I confess the truth of this murder continues to elude me, but no doubt you are soon to enlighten us with your great powers of deduction and observation. May I inspect the body again? No, that won't that wouldn't be fair to the other passengers who haven't had a look yet. <laughs> that, Cause that's fair. <laughs> I see. But I will tell you again right now. At eleven thirteen AM the professor dropped dead in his chair after sitting down and his wife for a cup of tea. At that time, Mrs. Rio Kenshi and Mr. Andretti were the only other passengers present in this car. Mr. Perry will return later. Less I leave to you to deduce, Detective. Rio Kenshi and, were the, and Andretti were the only passengers in the car. Okay. Yume Rio Kenshi, the victim's wife. Nicolo Andretti, a businessman. The chair. Martin Perry, a youth. The young man is absent mindedly but methodically dissembling and reassembling a fountain pen. <laughs> As I said, yes, the man was a professor of mine at Burgerworth College, and yes, he, did, he gave me a C and a D, but that's no reason to kill a man, would you agree? Besides, at the time of his death, I was at the lavatory trying to figure out where all the bits and pieces do. Proved alibi, wouldn't you agree? Detective mood. <laughs> Deductive observations ring around your mind. He's right. A mere C and D are no reason to kill one's professor. Is this, is this the whole story? Observe how the boy tinkered. Oh, this is a Sherlock Holmes freaking uh, joke. Observe how the boy tinkers with the fountain pen in the train lavatory. He fancies himself a mechanic, but he wanted to get a foot in the door of the profession if his C and D stood for card dunce. <laughs> Nobody would be able to hire him. Unless the professor who awarded those ignominious menace grades died. In that event, every grade he had ever gave would be voided. This young man could, could, could take a plum job in car manufacture and start earning the big bucks. The widow Ryu, Ryu Kenshi dabs her eyes with a handkerchief and brought out the words, Morning rags and wipes. <laughs> bit on the nose, huh? A moment's privacy, please, detective. I have nothing to do with my husband's death, and no reason to want him gone. He was a kind man, not a rich one. Everything he made, he spent on the roulette tables. He owned over 700 of them. That's the largest collection in the world. We were traveling to Yorba Linda, so the mayor could give my husband the key to the city. But that won't happen now. You deduce that you should make some observations. Sometimes the simplest answer is the correct one. She says she had no reason to wish her husband dead, but the chemical stain on her cuticles and fingerprints in the window above she opened to dispose of the murder weapon until the tale more truly. But the nose reveals even more. Observe the zigzag pattern of the medical cleft below the nostrils. It's called Petrie's Filtrum. It's a rare genetic condition she shares with Martin Perry. Her son. Dun dun dun! So Martin Perry is her son. She, she was previously married to uh, someone else, I guess. I don't know what that really has anything to do with it. Um, Alright. Uh, well, let's talk to Niccolo, Niccolo Andretti. I told you, I've never even heard of this man. I know of Burgerworth College, of course. It's an excellent institution. But I didn't know he was a professor there. Now, come on. Let's not delay our journey further. I'm traveling with 19 suitcases of exotic rubber to make new exciting wheels at the factory. Detective mode. Exotic rubber, eh? No doubt from the jungles of Almo Dovar, whose local rubber brand of nicotine I smell in this collar. Of course, the rubber plants of Almo Dovar don't just yield material for bouncy tires, but an odorless poison, lethal when drunk in hot tea. But why would this man be abet the murder of a stranger? I speak the man lies on the resume on the table and the name prints on it. Martin Perry. <laughs> Well, let's see what we can do. Tell me again what you know of this case. He dro dro dropped dead in his chair after sitting down with his wife for a cup of tea. At that time, 
Mrs. Mrs. Ryu Kenshin were only other passengers. It's a priority return later. I've solved this murder. Hmm. Sm clobbered, smush, blown up, poisoned. He definitely wasn't stabbed. Or shot. Let's say poisoned. A giant dog? <laughs> it couldn't have been the dog. What? Cretino! Please, I'll be clear. Exotic poison from the Amo Devar rubber tree. <laughs> to, to avoid Martin Perry's car dunce grade so he can make tires for Mr. Andretti. Nonsense! I'd give you a D for I'd give a D for Donkey Tonk talk. Careful now, don't be a fool. You were gifted with great power. Great powers of detection or observation. Now come on, use them. This is how the tale happened. <laughs> so there's a specific answer that's not just silly bullshit, I guess. I give an F for funny stuff. I guess the D means I was closer than uh, previously. Oh, I give an A for a bad guess. No, no, you're a donkey. Okay, so I guess I'm close. I got pretty close, so there's something wrong. Oh, okay, I was close. The victim was poisoned by Yumi and Ryu Ryukenshi with exotic poison from the Almo Devar rubber tree to avoid Martin Perry's car done scrape so he can make tires for Mr. Andretti. Young Martin Perry dreams of working on cars, and his fresh ideas excite Mr. Andretti, who runs a car factory. But Master, but Master Perry's professor has effectively blacklisted him as a car dunce. Unemployable. What to do? Kill the professor, of course, and void that odious grade. Here the plot becomes most wretched. Master Perry's mother, Yumi Ryukenshi, marries the professor and arranges for him to be present on the very same train as Master Perry and Mr. Andretti, who supplies an undetectable poison administered by Mrs. Ryukenshi. Et voila! No more professor, no more car dunce. But there is one one thing our, our, our three conspirators not count on. Me. Pause for applause. I'm not ashamed. Any parent, sir, would have done the same. As would any manager seeking new talent with interesting ideas about tires. If you call someone a car dunce, you're branding them for life, and you're responsible for anything that happens next. How awful. The three of them in it together? Tell you what, detective. The next stop, they can all get out and take the bus. Sick business. Quite so, but a wonderful feeling. I think, to be possessed of great gifts, great powers of deduction and observation, and to use them. Here's another a gift that is called a reward. A gift from a coroner in a dream or in something. Nice ring, is it? Looks like, look what reward it, look what rewards accrue to the powerful. Look how the world reveals itself, reveals itself at your touch. I must take my leave. So is that it? Wait. Remove your gaze? Hey Jessica, does this thing remove get rid of the gases? The pearl of a goose is geese. Why do you have geese? No gaze, like a curse. Oh well sure, probably. Do it. Ah the inside inside the contraption you feel a whoosh, a pop, and a little pain, but not unlike having your ears pierced, then indeed there's a spurt of pus that follows the procedure. Well, not from where you think. The gaze is gone. Yay! No more weird swamp woman curse. <laughs> I 
You already have your answers, detective. Sought to avenge your son. Hire man's factory. There are cons. Yes, no, wait. The victim was. <laughs> what? There's another answer? Yes, I don't. Wait, what are you getting at? It was stabbed by a giant dog with a katana to shut him up. What What are you doing, detective? You already solved the cat. You, you were given a great power and you used it. Do you remember? Do you remember the th ring? You're being foolish now. Maybe I have to put the ring on outside. And then come back or something. As the papers say, to, to sniff out that my C and D stood for car dunce. Yes, I put the whole plot in motion. Of course, it getting called a car dunce ruined my shot at my career at wheels. But I decided to make a living. Wouldn't you agree? This is the only way. He's the car dunce. I admit, detective, I poisoned my husband, but it'll spare me the reproach. Wouldn't you do just as I did if, if some scoundrel of the ivory tower branded your son a car dunce? No, then I dare say you're not a parent, sir. I supplied the poison that killed the presser, but wasn't it worth it? Look at this resume of Martin Perry. Look at these interesting ideas he has about the tires. Bouncier, globular, backwards. Is the life of one man worth more than bringing new and innovative wheels to the world? Yes, I did it. I did it so I could hire Mr. Perry. I would do it again tomorrow. Don't lie, detective. You would, too. Sick curiosity. You're a fool, a fool! I give you great powers of deduction and observation. I give you the power to bend back the skin of the world and sniff its insides. How dare you waste it? You really want to live without this power? You really want to live in the dark? Yes. You're a fool, and I want to saw that ring and I uncurse you. Ah! So, did that curse effectively try to bribe you into not destroying it? That's a little disconcerting. You look at the rick key that once harbored its shadowy magic, it shimmers in the light. You check your fingers and pockets, no mysterious owl ring. You are reminded of the great figures of history who wielded incredible power and chose to give it up. You can't think of anything specific, but the concept is interesting to consider. Who's so unfamous who gave up great power? He's not famous, but my dad ne but my dad never eats more than he needs to at a buffet. <laughs> I don't remember where the, I read this, but it was a rumor that Anne, Bole Anne Boleyn had access to a tank but chose not to use it. No need, she said. And you know who else had a tank? Walt Whitman. Ah, sure. I mean, we didn't ever finish this fishing rods curse. I don't know what to do for it. Like, where'd this hook? I guess we're, like, meant to catch a fish or something? Let's catch this one, I guess. Nobody sees and nobody woos. Poor old invisible... Blubber glubber fur loo. But you could make this loo, sir, a winner. If you rebirth me upstairs at somebody's dinner. Alright. Come some dinner, I guess. I don't know. Fishing rod's curse has caught another fish today. You get the feeling the more fish you help him catch, the harder he'll be. I don't. I'm gonna look that up because I don't understand what's even going on. <laughs> it's just. It's a little silly. I don't, I don't know, I don't understand. Uh, let's look it up. Shadows overloading. Cursed. Fishing rod. All the fish just keep randomizing, none of them work. How am I supposed to do this? Oh, is it you, f you have to fail three times and then 
something else appears? Hmm. Well, let's see if that's the case. Oh, yep, there it is. This is the cycle. Break it. <laughs> that's, that's silly. Well, we broke the cycle, I guess. When the curse got its teeth into the bicycle, it screamed, but only for a moment, then silence. Limp silence. The insatiable eldritch hunger for fish has once animated the curse is gone. The fishing rod remains behind, just a stick and a hook, too weak to catch anything that lives. Can't even fish, fish with it now. Probably just throw this thing in the trash then. <laughs> Messages? Call Don T. Alright, what's up? Don Toblerone speaking. Don, that was unusually concise. Are you feeling okay? The boss is mad at our telephone bill. I have been encouraged to keep this brief. I see. Well, what's the job? Okay, Greasy Steve, let's go talk. <laughs> let's go talk to Greasy Steve at Fission Chips. Easy. <laughs> On your way to where you're going, you wander into a vacant laboratory and look around. A big chunk of bloodstone ore sits in one of the lab workbenches. From notes on the chalkboard, you conclude that somebody was trying to prove definitively that you can't get blood from a stone. Using your geology training and also a spoon, you collect some blood from the stone. If they'd used literally any other type of rock, their experiment would have, experiment would have been a success. <laughs> Good job. Good for them. Hey kid, good to see you. Have a french fry. They have fries here? I didn't see it on the menu. I bring my own from home. I pass. What's this? The boss decided we need to send a message to Congressman Chutney. You familiar? Sure. Message is when information is conveyed from one person to another. I met him with the Congressman. Never heard, never met him. His son Chadley is a student here. He lives at one of the frat houses. Zeta Omega Omicron. I know the place. So? So you're gonna make young Chad sleep with the fishes. Whoa, 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 I didn't sign up for... Grease to see passing you a large sack of rotting fish. Oh, well I didn't sign up for this either. Look, all you gotta do is get into the kids' room. It's a lead pipe cinch. I don't know what that means, but okay. <laughs> you find a discarded gym bag in, in the sidewalk. It's full of rocks. <laughs> of course it is. Oh, this place is really loud. I don't really like it. This fuse box is stuffed full of celery. Scary bomb. Woo! Comfort bomb, okay. Sneak into Chad's bedroom and dump the rotting fish out into his bed. After tonight's inevitable rager, he'll stagger back to his room and pass out without even noticing them. The perfect crime. Bada bing, bada boom. Toilet shards. This toilet still works, but its spirit is broken. <laughs> From the grunting and shouting, there's either a brawl or a sporting event taking place in this room. Possibly both. Let's look at our to-do list. Go to bed. Side quests. Tell him he sleeps with the fishes. Need to find radios out in the world. Smart rat. Um. I used to go to Rufus's. Go to Rufus's and then the, uh. There's a smart rat here. Then we got some cheese. Give him the gator cheese. The rat sniffs the gator cheese and retches a little bit. You don't even know rats had a gag reflex. He raises an eyebrow at you in protest, but eventually drags the cheese into his hole and emerges with the ring for you. 
Thank you, and sorry, I don't like it either. Ratsuki says, says no problem. <laughs> Barbecue wing maintenance access. <laughs> God, it's fucking game. traditionally very lazy. Uh, sleaze armor. Let's see if there's any... I saw this, but I want to see if I can hold on to that in case it's useful somewhere else. Looks like we're gonna eat that food. Burp. Oh! A greasy paper hat. Paper hat soaked into nearly translucently by fry oil and fish grease. Mmm. Fish sandwich taco style. <laughs> An onion starfish. That sounds awful. Side quest radios and, um. Hold on, are you Tom and Kathy? Chapman. You can see you put your work to remember their surnames, and then you may be at cross purposes. Respect to Mr. Pete. Who wants to know? I've been looking literally everywhere for you two. Really? Lots of times. If you say literally, they're not using using it right. When people say it's literally raining on my wedding day, it's not talking about actual rain. I actually do mean it though. Take a last look. We're on the next bus out. Hey, folks back home think you were kidnapped or eaten. That's so utterly typical. They can't even conceive that somebody might not want to live in the same small, little, large, <laughs> small, little, large mouth, fast life that they do. It's not even a life. Not for us, it's not. The kind of life we want to lead is only possible in the city. What kind of life is that? We're gonna start making wig. a business making wigs for judges. Is that a job? Are they. are you. <laughs> I don't think judges wear wigs in this country. In this country. It's gonna be an international company. That's where the money is, if you know anything about business. I need to take you back to your parents. Hold of that, you need to take us back like a vast needs bones. We're not going back, pal. Not not ever. Largemouth Bass and Sons is a trap. All we can ever do is there is repeat the same old toxic patterns that our fathers did. Our grandfathers did. Debone the fish, rebone the fish, debone the fish. What's the point? It's a mindless life, and it's never going to change. No, pal. Not for us. Better to die in poverty than to live a large-mouth bass deboner or reboner. Unfortunately, I was hired to bring you home. 
Listen, friend, we're not going back. There's nothing and nobody that can make us. Oh. Uh-oh. The, the gator is actually real. No, no. Occam's gator, you, you have no power here. That's a real guy? <laughs> Occam's gator is why he's the bane of our lives, our family's lives. He's haunted us, tortured us before I was even born. What does he want? Back. Did you say back? Miserable back. We, we, we will be miserable if we go back. The gator sneers. Here's the prize. This apparently has no intention of killing or eating the children. It means to return them home to large amounts of sun, bass and sons. But why? Why would it care? You want them to be miserable? Oh yes, miserable back. I don't know what Occam's gator wants except, except our whole family to be miserable. I don't know why else he tortures us. What's your problem? Misery! You just want to cause misery. Bass misery! To, to large mouth bass and sun specifically. Why? God! What? God? Misery God. You have a God that wants to cause misery? Amen! What's your God's name? Occam's Gator! Now you, want, now you leave those kids alone. Thank you, but there's no shaking Occam's Gator when he's got his mindset to a thing. Mindset! Uh, I'm, I'm mo my moxie's not high, higher because I'm not wearing stuff to make it happen. You wanna, you wanna tussle? Let's tussle. Well, that's a lot of HP. However, I have a thing that can literally do like half its fucking HP in one go. So let's uh... Can only do that like the enemy has already been knifed in the dark. Further knifing would be in poor taste. Who's this guy? It's Daniel the Jaywalker Bailey? Alright. Alright, let's see what, what goodies we have we can throw at this fucking gator. It's being a bleeding. So anything that's just beating, bleeding is just gonna not. His awful mouth. Don't show turt your mouth, that's rude. <laughs> we can do that. Rusty Cola is probably, it's pretty good. And we can do this three times. And then I can do 24 damage. And I can kill that thing definitely next turn. Chomp. Rude. You know what, he'll, he'll turt, turt's important to my soul. <laughs> Professor Adams just tells you some boring facts about foes you just defeated. Dried swamp meat, Occam's gator's toenail. <laughs> Amphibious truck engine. Oh, hey, there's the truck engine that was eaten. Some gator hides. He, he who does misery unto others will also have that misery done unto him. Which is another way of saying, you beat Occam's gator senseless and his reptilian remains have decomposed into swamp goo. Perhaps none of the folks at Largemouth Bassinson's will tell stories about you. It's not like you don't deserve it at this point. I don't know what to say. Nobody's ever done anything like that for me before. Kill a huge gator man, I mean. No, nobody's ever done that for me either. I don't know how I can repeat. Oh, there's money. I forgot about money for a second. <laughs> I know it's not much, but would you like this free sample of the judge's wig? Enjoy that, but mind you, don't combine it with the jury's wig and the executioner's wig. Nobody should have that much power. Hold on now. Are you still trying to take us back to Largemouth Bass? Yes, I'd very much like to do that. 
Oh, get out of here. We're not going to do that. No, no way. If this run-in with Occam's Gator has taught me anything, it's that life's too short and it's time for Kathy and I to leave home and write our stone story. No, you should go back. Goodbye, then. Well. Alright. So now we gotta go back to Largemouth Bass and Sons. There's still a lot of places we haven't even been to in this place. Old house, abandoned long ago to the swamp. Half sunk in the wet muck, muck that passes in these parts for roads. Might have been a nice fan leaving the house once. Now, you, now look at it. Shame is all. Jeepers Creepers, there's a bandit shot dead on the floor right in the foyer. Must have came here looking for treasure. Holy gosh, sitting room is littered with bodies. Three more bandits in the entire defensive line of Ocean City football team. Bandits and football players got sold the same line and the buried treasure by some shifty rumor monger. Oh, here he's in the kitchen. Also shot by a bandit and a linebacker, looks like. But, but he got him too. Poor pathetic souls. Now the bedroom, the finish line, and here's who made it. Quarterback and the wide receiver. You'd figure they had been on the same side, but they shot each other in the back simultaneously. There's nothing in here but a single jewelry box and a nightstand. Ain't that funny. All that death for a couple of trinkets. Nothing rots a person like greed. Yoink! <laughs> Weep openly and continue where you were going. <laughs> I will take the yoink though. what I even get? A jewelry case. Hamethyst armband, okay. A bacon a bacon stone bracelet and a white hot ring. Nice. Goodies. Alright, unfortunately they uh your kids are gone and I kill but I killed the gator. I ate your sandwich. I found these teeth under a pillow. Yes, these are mine. You believe they're tooth fairy? No. Occam's Gator is dead. I like to be with but he died before. One time from a rifle shot the head, another from TB. He always rises from the ashes like that bird, the... Phoenix? No, I'm thinking of a duck. You see this. Ain't never? Ain't I, my friend? These are the, the vulgar contractions of Occam's Gator. I didn't give Kathy a copy of Jane, Jane Eyre to have her contracted properly. You know, this letter is an obvious ruse, friend. Occam's clumsily attempt to throw us off the scent. Monster Skater Man. How is I gonna write letters? I hate your sandwich. No, you didn't. The one in the fridge is a decoy. Nobody's ever found the real thing. Sorry about your daughter. I only hope she realized the mistakes she made. Her mother always told her, "Don't throw your life your way. Don't throw away your life for a man like I did." Meaning you, huh? Now you mentioned it, I wonder. Ain't chance to get that still get that fishing rod? I would sooner give it to the bass themselves. Fair enough. God knows what they'd do with, they'd do if the fish got their flippers on that sort of technology, though. I don't know what I'm telling you. I think we'd be dead in a week. We're working for them. We will suffer the setback, as we've always done, but our plan to rebrand as large about bass and sons and daughter will have to be put on hold. A pity. The name rolls off the tongue, which would be appropriate. That's how, that's how we slide the fish bones out. Well, if I would have had my moxie higher, I probably would have been able to... Uh, like, if I literally would have, like, I don't know, let me see, had, like, not this on, I probably wouldn't be able to, to convince them to come back, but, yeah. Too late, friend. Tom's gone. I received a telegram from him with news he's in the big city. Thriving as the head of his own business, man, friendship wigs for judges. Wait, he's already set up a business? It's already thriving? Yes, it's fast, I know, but Judge's wigs are a gold mine, and I can tell you you don't have business instincts, or you would have recognized that right away. All you have in your mess is hardtack. Hardtack's about all we eat, it's three bone too. Hardtack doesn't have bones. That's changing. That's ominous! <laughs> Occam's Gator is dead. You say that, but I'm not convinced he, he can actually die. I've seen him sucked into a biplane propeller only for his ooze to reconstitute itself in an even larger form. As far as I'm concerned, there are two constants in life. Death, specifically, Othman's Gator not having one, and taxes. Those things we har were harangued about every month that seems very boring. Sorry of your son. You know, I'm actually proud of him. I always thought he was a dreamer. Never realized he had those killer instincts for business. Ah, yeah. He's a good sort, Tom. Maybe I've been unfair to him. 
Are we, worried about your, are we worried about the future of your business without Tom? Succession is only an issue if I die, would you agree? That's far from inev inevitable since I invest in good helmet. Bye. As you approach, the cat raises a quizzical eyebrow. I don't know what you're talking about. I certainly didn't have anything to do with helping Tom Chapman and Kathy Tracy feeding their mar largemouth bats fishing forefathers. <laughs> the cat only chuckles in response. What's your name, girl? The cat points to color. Charybdis. Oh, didn't need to ask, yes. Pet the cat. You pet Charybdis. Unfortunately, it's all about all loyalty is good for. Hey, that's worth it. Well, I think that side quest is done then in that case. Radios. We go back to, to Chut Mr. Chutney. Tell him to do sleeps with the fishes. <laughs> Let's handle that. Might as well. More miscellaneous chemicals. Kind of handy to have, actually. So, how'd it go, kid? You got some news for me? Yeah, the kid's bed is full of fish. It was a lead pipe cinch, like you said. Still don't know what that means, though. Nobody does. That's what it makes such a great turn of phrase. Anyway, nice job, kid. Our Congressman Chutney will really know who he's dealing with. He sure will. Well, I think it's time to sleep again. Uh, jarred wears hardware. I forgot. That's... Bahuga. It's fine. Yieldy Kimiker. Huh. Well, it's nice that we can have this kind of stuff here. An easy slab bench? Sure, help yourself. Just be careful not to blow anything up. I reserve the right to do all the blowing up to stuff here myself. <laughs> Double ice. Self boiling solution. Plasmatic elixir. Hmm. Universal lubricant. Ooh, that's tempting, honestly. I mean, the AP is really nice from the uh, vibrating mixture that I can make. Hi, I'm Mars. Is this your shop? Oh, yes, it certainly is. My name's Janus. Janus Kimiker. Didn't you just move in? Why is it all blown up in here? Well, I always say it isn't real chemistry if you don't blow everything up and catch your hair on fire a couple of times. So I like to get it out of the way early. I'll come back after I check on my insurance. Oh, you, you sell just as many of these as I want, huh? Let's actually go back to the SIT. I'm gonna go to the chem we can go to the chemical place and trade for chemicals. Because you can leave a chemical, take a chemical. Let's get some more XP, I guess. And we want some, uh, we would like some energizing powder. I don't really care about that. your mind about the whole chemical process. Alright. Now, let's go back to Ocean City and sleep. Time to pick a fourth store. Right! <laughs> First applicant is 10 things I hat about you. A hat store, I presume. Terrible name. La Table and Chanti. It's like a high-end kitchen store. Bertram's Bakery. Bert's a buddy of mine from my restaurant days. Makes a good loaf. A bakery sounds good. Okay, I gotta move in. You find a hook on one of the ceiling beams and hang up your new refrigerator. <laughs> Place the glue orb thing for your knickknack shelf. Excellent. 
orb touched. And ooh, nice. It's up more stuff for our buffs. The Caterman Cola. Oh, a potion of just extra HP. That's not bad. You're swamped with exhaustion. Of course I am. A disconcerting dream. Safe and warm. Today's to October 20, 1902. My diary. This diary is property of Margaret. H9. All others got to keep out under penalty of law. Dear diary. Yesterday, our dog Daisy died. Papa said it was it was bound to happen because she was older than me, which isn't old for a kid, but it's really old for a dog. He said we'll get a new dog soon, but I was sad anyway. Some birthday. At school today, the teacher asked what we want to be when we grow up. I said I'll be God, because then I can make sure all the dogs live a long time and are always happy. Everyone laughed, and that jerk Billy Gribsley said a girl can't be God. So I said I'll be president instead, because that's nearly as good. He said a girl can't be president either. Well, I'll show him. I'm going to make all kinds of laws that, about being nice to dogs, and I'll make being a jerk illegal too. So Billy Gribsby goes to jail and can't eat nothing but bread and water forever. So there. Point Dexter, your insufferable bean counter. What is it, Terrence? Madam Comptroller, I merely need your signature on these budget revisions. With this, the remainder of funds currently allocated to municipal services will be erected to your shadow presidential campaign and your other projects. That sounds a bit obvious. Rest assured, I am only sparing you the details, which you have made quite clear to me that you find intolerably boring. The transactions will be meticulously obscured through shell corporations, cutouts, offshore accounts, and the like. Alright, good. Better not be skimming more off the top than I'm willing to ignore. Certainly not, Madam Comptroller. It's time, for the recorder, it's time to record the announcement of your candidacy for Shadow President. One of your pure luck is carefully trained to be just unafraid of you enough to tell you what not to say in public. Alright, <clears throat> attention peons. Oh jeez, don't call them peons, ma'am. And uh, please try for, a, try for a less totalitarian tone generally. Right, right, so I let something like... What's cooking, my pals? My fellow citizens. Hi, Margaret. That's weird. The levels went all funny when you said your last name. Don't worry about it. Hereby announce my candidacy for Shadow President. Vote for me or else. Uh, nope. Sorry, ma'am, no. Ugh. Start up by explaining who you are. Most of them probably don't pay much attention to local politics. All right. In my role as Ocean City's Comptroller, I have made it my mission to eliminate waste and graft in, t in the city's finances. Make sure you all get exactly what you deserve. <laughs> Robbie Sucker's blind for my own nefarious piece. Probably this one. Eliminate waste and graft in the city's finances. I am proud to say that I have been completely successful. Through my program of shutting down necessarily needlessly wa wasteful civic programs, thereby... Reserving your valuable taxpayer meat for the things that actually matter. Things like mom baseball and apple pie. It's pretty good, but it isn't cliche yet. It will be soon. Hmm, how about things like family, prosperity, and freedom? Perfectly meaningless. Love it. Okay. Then just a call to action to top it off, and we're done. Vote for me, I'll destroy you. Vote for me is a vote for you. Good, is that all? Yep, I want all the legal, this message, blah, blah, campaign, shadow for president stuff and post. Great, I'm out of here. Ugh, time travel makes my guts itch. This guy's the yoke even by the standard of his time. Time to grease the wheels. Mayor Burby, I presume. Hmm, yes. Who are you? I'm here to speak to you about the Crystal Dream Valley Dam project. I want you to make the dam bigger, much bigger, and much more powerful. Here are some revised plans. Dam this large will flood the valley and displace hundreds of people. Besides, the dam as planned will provide a perfectly adequate amount of power. Why will we need to make it bigger? How about a handshake agreement? What? I don't even know who you are. You want me to agree with this on the basis of a handshake? Specifically, I'm offering you the chance to shake hands with the handle of this large briefcase full of meat. Oh, uh, hmm. Well now, yes, yes, I think this new plan is quite 
quite viable. Good. There's a sheep. There's a sheep in your office. What the hell? Turns out that a lot of the president's time is spent on ceremonial bullcrap that nobody actually cares about. Case in point, pardoning the Thanksgiving turkey. None of your aides know what a turkey looks like, apparently. Bah! Pardon the damn thing, anyway. Your desk covered in policy documents, both benevolent and malign. There's no here about going back in time and making the crystal dream damn bigger. Gotta get on that eventually. Your ridiculous court wizard isn't taking the situation seriously. Make it clear to her what is required. Give me a progress court on the SIT thing. Have you taken care of the problem yet? Oh, it's so dreary and infestive there. All that math and science isn't holy or isn't holly or jolly. Screw your damn theme. Your entire job is dealing with magical issues. I won't have that do-gutting interloper messing around in the library. That's too much at stake. Get it dealt with, or I'm giving Crimbo's federal holiday status to the friggin' groundhog. You wouldn't! Go, get out of my office! <laughs> six lockers. There are, in fact, six of them. Some dumb jock kid you have to give a pervert presidential fitness award to. Get it over with. Hey, kid, how's it going? Uh, hi? Brilliant. Alright, by the power vested in me as the shadow president, here's an award for being able to climb a rope faster than most other kids. Which is definitely important, and this is a great use of my time. Uh, thanks. Do I give a speech? Whatever, I'm out of here. It's the, it, this miserable beast. It's the Gator King. President Strong, make rich. Yes, I know, and yes, you don't have to remind me of the terms of our two-word agreement. You're keeping your people mean and hungry? Yes, warriors mean, warriors hungry, good fighters. That's right. You're mace in the hole, the stinking mud hole, if I need to use force. So you better stay on top of things if you want you to make your make rich. Keep everyone worshipping at the Gator Shrine too, but for God's sake, don't mess with the stuff in the basement. If you screw anything up down there, I'll turn you into wallets. Get me? Gulp, I get. Good. Oh, she's getting even more like evilly bizarro. This useless oaf. More damn paperwork. How come nobody told me being president is all paperwork and talking to idiots? Sorry, ma'am. But the unwashed masses gotta be kept in line while we mass power. Yeah, yeah, fine. I hereby sign this order declaring July 12th National Bread and Circuses Day. <laughs> All citizens get a complimentary dinner roll and a free turn in the nearest suitable trapeze. Uh, ma'am, I am sure that. Who cares? Let Coolidge deal with it. What's he even for, anyway? This is all beneath me! Shadow hair. Hellstrom, what does he want? Alright, Hellstrom, let's hear your report. Everything's fine and dandy, ma'am. I don't rightly understand what this shadow energy stuff is exactly, or why you want so god darn much of it, but the converters are spraying it out slicker than greased missile. Gatling gun! With plenty of slack up over to press into those weird monsters you like. Finally, some good news. So I meet the project deadline? Yep. Then we need to expand the oil drilling procedure some more. Need to sign this permit so we can expand to lots 210, 240. Sure, whatever. Wait, 210, 240? Not a problem? My family's farm is 223. Ah, well, ma'am. If you want your black, weird black juice, you gotta get the regular black juice out of the ground first. Alright, fine. Sorry, Grandpa. What a bitch. So, so, Shadow President, like, orchestrated a lot of weird shit behind the scenes. That we are just dreaming about, I guess. Good old nightstand. Tentacle! Let's get our buffs. Hello, you awful little creature. <laughs> I fucking love that. It's so good. It's my favorite. No shows have been invented yet. I already got a gator cola. Sigh. We got a sick. We got a sickle from a signal. Wait. We got a signal from a sickle. You know the farming tool thing. It's over in Gray County somewhere. Mostly nothing but farms there. But there's a store that's been open since forever. The owner's name is Jasper. He knows Murray. He'll probably help you out. Here's a map. Gray County placemat map. Location unlocked. Jasper's feed and tech. This is a diner placemat. 
it literally has a map of the county right in the middle of it. Oh, I'm just impressed that you found a way to give me an actual map while still giving me a thing that isn't a map. <laughs> oh, message. All right, Bonte. Salutatory greetationing. The person who has activated this telephonic mechanism and with whom you are now conversating is known as Don Tolberone. I thought your boss had said that you had to keep it brief now. We devised and then agreed upon an, ar an arrangement deemed satisfactory to both parties. Let me guess, you're paying the phone bill. Your guessing prowess is preternaturally e efficacious. That's what they that's what they tell me. You got another job? Once again, the particulars of this undertaking are being held in escrow and be tremendously or oraliously or by our colleague Greasy Steve. Got it. Bye. <laughs> No bother he's bouncing. You're back, baby. I am. Here's your cut of the profits, baby. I found this drum, drum of Vermouth. Yeah, baby, Vermouth is a, one of my favorite mouths. I found this creative bass oil. I don't think people are going to like this very much, but you're the boss. I found some olives. Fantastic. Our martinis are going I've been a little lackluster, I must admit. All right, drink time. Nothing mentioned, nothing gained. Corn's good with onions. They're both like a maze. Yep, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Fabian looks much happier outside of the swamp. How you doing, Fabian? Great, and getting better. Every day is a good day as so long as you're not inside of Gator Man's refrigerator. What if you're in someone else's refrigerator? That's a good point. I don't think I'd enjoy being in anyone's refrigerator. I will have to revise my saying. You know, I am an artist. I never make many claims of being a writer. Alright, cool. A fifth date and you shouldn't bother them. Grapes under here, you already got the grapes. Gabby's cutting some rug. Look at her go. <laughs> Don't take any eating wood sucks. Take care of some business. You got it, sugar. Let me go iron my shoelace and I'll meet you at the door. Uh, okay. Molly's got a gun. Alright, well. I've had, a, I've had a blast playing more of this game, but I think we're gonna briefly end the stream. And, um, I'll eat my dinner and then I'll be back with some Minecraft and music. Alright, so. It's good progress, though. You won't encounter, you won't encounter so many spiders. I love that. That's silly. Alright, main menu. Alright, exit game. Yay! Alright, loathing is a good time. I hope y'all had a good time, because I did. Thank you so much for hang coming and hanging out. Thank you for the raid, Jedi. It's always, always nice seeing you. Let's see. Let me see if there's anyone I can raid real fast. I mean, I'm going to be, like, starting to, like, stream again soon anyhow, but... I figure I can at least drop a raid. It's, it's nice. Let's see. Ooh. Let's see. Uh, let's drop in and see what it looks like Mochi is playing Warframe. I have no idea really what Warframe even is about necessarily. But Mochi's a good friend, so we're gonna. Ha ha wah wah! <laughs> I'm gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna end the stream and we're gonna drop in to see Mochi who is playing Warframe. I'll be, ar I'll be around later if you wanna, if you wanna hang out some more. But for now, I'm gonna I'm gonna raid and eat my dinner, and then probably start again at like seven or seven thirty. So, 
But yep. Hey, that's okay. You probably should be. It's late there. <laughs> so on that, on that note, have a good rest whenever you go. Now I'm going to stop the stream and we're going to start the raid. See you later.